On today's episode of the Grab Matters podcast, we sit down with a very, very special guest, Cole Van Hoff. Uh, Cole currently works part-time for Alliance uh, Multimedia, where he does a lot of video projects for them. We talk with Cole about the movie Citrus, which has been in the works for the past seven or so years, um, and when that movie's going to come out. We talk about his early days in Georgia, how he got started in wakeboarding, um, kind of how he worked his way through the industry um, and, and got to where he is today. We also talk about playing semi-professional paintball, which he does as well. Cole also gives some good tips on you know filming wakeboarding for for those out there who are interested in learning a thing or two about, you know, filming wakeboarding, I want to give a big thank you to all the Patreon subscribers uh, for helping make this podcast possible. You know, without all you guys on the Patreon, um, this podcast wouldn't be what it is. So it's awesome to have everybody in there. Uh, if you guys are interested in supporting the podcast, the Patreon is definitely the best way to do that. Without further ado, here is Cole Van Hoff. I approve water boarding. They're talking about wakeboarding. The thing about wakeboarding, every trick is an inverse. Backside. One side. Air railing. A new dimension. All right. We're back. It's another episode of the Grab Matters Podcast. Today we welcome on a very special guest, Cole Vanthoff? Uh T Silent Van Hoff. No way. Yeah. If, if you really spelt it, it's V A N capital T apostrophe capital H O F. Interesting. But I don't spell it that way. I've heard a lot of people say your name and I think they've all said it wrong then. Yeah. If the T is silent. Everyone says it wrong. <laughs> uh, all right. First couple questions. Uh, wake pants, yes or no? Uh, I'll go yes. I don't wear them, but I, I get I get what's going on. Okay, fair enough. Uh, favorite grab? I would I would say tail grab, just because I that was just that was my go to. I think switch and regular, just okay. cr- just to crank them. I heard you have a good switch tail grab. Yeah, can well, you confirm? I would say my switch is probably better than my regular. Really? Yeah. I would think so. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, my, yeah, I'm weird because I snowboard left foot forward and I wakeboard right foot forward. So like things are really weird, like skateboard, left foot forward, like surf, left foot forward. But foil? Like, I haven't done it enough to like, under, I don't That's even so know. fascinating. I've never, I've heard several people be like, it's different yeah. for different sports, but yeah, wakeboarding is goofy. And I think it's because when I started, I like started one way and then didn't do it for a little bit. And then like, oh started up this way so i guess we're goofy okay no. yeah <laughs> i mean i feel like if you get started one way you just keep doing it and then all yeah of a sudden exactly you're in it exactly. uh all right what is uh what's your favorite fruit cole mm. probably a strawberry guy strawberry guy yeah okay yeah i like strawberry everything ice cream gummies all of it second favorite fruit probably banana third favorite fruit Blueberry. So I'm not hearing a lot of limes, lemons, oranges. Uh, yeah, you know, no. You know, I think I, I got a lot of questions about citrus. Yep. I feel like you want to just dive into it now or you want to? Yeah, let's, okay. let's, let's get it going. So I, maybe start from the top. I mean, what is what was citrus? What is citrus? So citrus was, and it still is, the idea of just doing an all winch, you know, movie with who I was hanging out with at that time, which was Mossy, Cody, and Dom. Um, pretty much, I think like I just moved down to Orlando, and it was like, you know, you want to do something cool. Like, I'm already hanging out with everybody and filming, but it's like, let's film something, like, sick. So at some point, that idea came up. But, um, yeah, it's it's a Florida-only winch movie. Okay. So it's like, only filmed in Florida. Like the boys wanted to go other places. Like Cody wanted to go to Atlanta. I'm like, no, dude, it's Florida, citrus. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So everybody's theme was like, you know, they'll have their own flavor of citrus. And like it kind of just kept growing a little bit, you know? Okay. So the name is kind of a, a layup, Florida, citrus. Yeah, nothing just to let you know there. it's Florida. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too deep there. So, I mean, how much, how much footage are we talking? I think... Mossy after Mossy's podcast here kind of got me juiced up and he came I over. did see some pics maybe yeah. so we, we went he came over now that he's back we laid his part out I already had Cody and Dom's section done I mean when I say done like they're cut like to the song like Cody's got two song choices I haven't figured out what I wanted um but you know just got to color them and tee them up a little better but pretty much everybody's sections cut and um, 
fuck, I don't, I don't even know where I was going with that. And you say you got what four or five riders? Four riders? Three. Three. And it was supposed to be Full parts. it was supposed to be Blake too. So it was, it was Dom, Cody, Mossy, and Blake. But then like kind of halfway through filming, it was like Blake's like phase out a little bit of wakeboarding. Yeah. So like the priority wasn't there for him. And we were all in Florida. So I was like, dude, you gotta come down. And it's like he's a Georgia boy, so he's up, yeah. you know, seven, eight hours away. So that was tough. But it's those three and then Blake Blake has a few clips. He's probably got like four or five clips. Okay. So how much would you say at the end when it's going to be chopped up? How long is Probably 15 minutes at the most. Okay. Definitely more than 10 because I think someone's parts like maybe four or five and then someone's parts three and then someone's like three and a half or something. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely would have loved to get more, but it's just like funny how, you know, we were filming for two, three years and then Dom pretty much stopped coming to America and then that happened and then. Cody went to be a stunt man and that was a priority for him. So it was like the times of getting out there like we were just weren't what it was. Yeah. And just kind of simmered out, I guess so you'd say. Was the plan to like was there a release date in mind when you guys were filming? Or were you like, okay, this is a street film, we know it's gonna take a long time. We didn't have a date when we started. Okay. It was like, we're just doing it. Yeah. You know? So which I thought was really cool because it was like we just did it on our own time. Like everyone's got stuff going on, like I had my stuff that I was doing for Alliance on, and then Cody's got his stuff, Mossy, Dom, everyone's doing their thing. So it's like, when we had moments, it was like, all right, let's go get you a spot this week, you know, or it just kind of like organically was growing. And it's like, oh, we got a fat stack of clips now. Let's make a teaser. Yeah. So we made a teaser and then it's like, this is getting real. And you're like, it's out there now. And then it just, that's when it kind of started. People were, mo you know, Dom wasn't coming back to America like he was. So it was just kind of like, the fire wasn't there, I guess you'd say, as it was when it started. Yeah. So then it kind of just, and then I got super busy, and then I just was like, it's been on the back burner for a minute. But it's like, it's sick because I'm going back, and like now I'm kind of getting the fire of like editing that stuff because I've edited wakeboard parts and like just all these edits for so long, it just wears you out. And you're yeah. like, uh, now I do a lot of more like corporate stuff, and like now I'm. I'm over that and I'm like, oh, this is I get back editing and I'm like, this is pretty sick. Kind of like, like a little passion project yeah, type dude. thing. When you yeah, get yeah. the song and you're like clips and they're landing oh, on beat, like, dude. <laughs> you know, like that's <laughs> sick. So um yeah, it's cool to kind of get back into it. So that's I would I would officially say that that is gonna drop this spring. There we go. hundred percent. hundred percent. hundred percent. Guarantee. Even if even if no one wants this, I mean, pretty much like by wake supported it a little bit so they're they're a sponsor and then alliance has blessed me with you know being able to work on it on some work days back in back in the day so they're a part but i mean solely like that was just me wanting to do something yeah full know? passion project to get it yeah so hopefully some other people want to get in once we have something to show them but either way it's it's going to drop i dude i is there some heat in there i feel like i was i, there's I some, the there's teaser. some heat dude yeah like <clears throat> it's it was honest there's there's blood there's bones broken like it's well, massey's injury right is it has it got injured twice oh twice i mean to be honest like that filming all that with mossy has made him into the wincher he is today because like he was he would go too far it's like you you got the trick first try walk away yeah. why why are we why are you trying to add a little flavor like the flavor is done, dude. Like you tasted it. Move on. Like now we're in the hospital and freaking jacked up. So it's like multiple times of that where I'm like, dude, you just, once you get it, like winching is no joke, you know? Yeah. Like, so it's sick to see him like do other stuff now. And he's just in animals just as much as Dom and Cody is. And it's cool. Yeah. I mean, and that's a fucking stacked squad, dude. Like in terms of who, in terms of like street clips, I mean, Massey was probably young when he was filming it. So he didn't have a huge bag before that. Yeah. But like, Dom, Cody, Blake, like yeah, and then That's, there's probably some friends in there too. I'd imagine they have some heat too. Yeah, there was there was random stuff like George Daniels. Oops, George Daniels like wake skit. I'm pretty sure that's still there. I need to throw that in there. But it's like, I mean, like random stuff like that for sure. Like Graham, I think at one point he was in town for a little bit. That was the whole vibe. That way we can fill up sections a little easier with you know some friend clips. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so officially spring of 24. Yeah, coming out. And will that just be like on the Alliance channel or? Yeah, it'll probably just go on the Alliance YouTube and be on the website and we'll, 
we'll make a bunch of social stuff, which will be sick. I honestly want what I used to do with like, like I did with Blake's on Tame Part back in the day, like the raw files. I always loved that, like in skateboarding, yeah. anything. So we'll probably release the movie and then do each person's like raw file. Sweet. So it'll be like a good length of like stuff coming out for it once we drop it. Yeah. And definitely I feel like nowadays social media is a little bit more catered to like, you could make a reel about, you know, just a spot or whatever. Like oh, you yeah, got a lot dude, of options. There's so much. We, of, yeah. I mean, yeah. just each, each trick is a clip, yeah. you know? So it's like, we'll have so much footage for stick, yeah. you know, feed the beast. Wow. Okay. So movies, that's one confirmed coming out in 24. Yeah. I feel like people are going to be hyped on that one. Also a little walk down memory lane with probably some of the boards that were <laughs> that, <laughs> dude, that that is what's crazy is like I was watching like that's like some people didn't even have pro models yet. Like, yeah, you know, like because that's I mean probably seven years ago when we started that. That's gotta be pre Cody Hess pro model, right? Oh, for Has sure. To be, yeah. Yeah, there's like he's riding like the lime green, like hyperlight wishbone or some shit. Yeah, yeah. the fucking or union highlighter or board or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. And that's a great length of time, I think that twelve to fifteen minute segment, like I love that. I love that length. So yeah, I'm yeah, not too much, to not too much filler. Yeah, I'll kill her no filler. That's what we like to see. I like that. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's dive into the early days of coal. So run us through, you know, where you're from, how you got into wakeboarding. Yeah, so I was born in Texas, moved to Georgia when I was like one. So I've, I was a Georgia boy all the way. Um, parents got divorced when I was two, so my dad lived in Petrie City, Georgia. And he was a pilot. My mom was a flight attendant. So we, she lived in Marietta, Georgia. Um, so I grew up there and my dad was a water skier or he's actually like an instructor. So he was teaching people how to water ski. He had a house on Lake Peachtree at the end of the cul-de-sac. Um, and he would, you know, give people lessons, barefoot lessons, all that kind of stuff. He was like super into water sports. So that's kind of where I got that. Um, and I would go back and forth you know, to his house every other weekend. And I would, you know, kneeboard, water ski, you know, just everything just you do after the water. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of tubing. Like the tubing was kind of insane, you know, like starting the tubes on top of the roof of the oh, dock. Okay. And like we were just trying to, you know, double pancakes going around the bin, just lifting and going over people, like people losing their shorts because you're just hanging on for dear life. Like I loved all that stuff. So like he got the water sports you know ingrained in me with all bug that. or whatever yeah and then it was like standing on a kneeboard you know, you know and at that time i was probably 10 and like i want to say wakeboarding was becoming like really like known in the water sports industry is like boards were legit like you had like but uh like uh burt's water sports or whatever it was called like Overtons, like the magazine, like you ordered it from a book. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, so I remember like circling things I wanted. And I remember I came back one weekend and he had this like hydro slide. It yeah. Like a, it was like a hydro slide, but it was way too big for me. But I remember we took that out and I got up second try. And it was like he had like a 92 Supra, got up second try behind the pylon. I was like, oh, this is pretty sick. Kids are natural. Yeah, right on. Like, I mean, I was already like standing on kneeboards, like just being a wild sure, child. Yeah. So that was, but it was also huge. Like it was a huge board for me. So like, you know, you just immediately popped up. So it was super easy. And then I think the next, when I, by the time I was like 11, 12, I got a, um, it was a Hyperlite. It had like a Gundam like robot on it. I still have it. It's at my parents' house in Georgia. And it was like a Grom's board and I had like black and green bindings. I'll have to, maybe I'll, get a photo of it and send it to you but yeah, it was yeah like, definitely it's it's so tiny it's so funny that i rode that so it's like rode that for a good bit and then by the time i was 13 i didn't uh i didn't go over my dad's for a while whatever i was too young i didn't know what situations were or anything so ended up not going over there and i when i was wakeboarding between like 11 12 i was jumping the wake 180s it wasn't like anything. I remember I went to one camp in Jacksonville and I tried a backside 360 and KO'd myself like four times. It was like Aqua East or some some kind of, yeah. I was like, that, I don't know why that's what I wanted to learn, but they were like, yeah, just try it. And I just kept Definitely it. interesting, like first trick to learn. Yeah, back three, what? Weird. But uh, 
Yeah, I didn't, didn't wakeboard for like a long time, played baseball. Okay, I was going to ask any other sports in there. Yeah, so I mean, I played everything, but baseball was like my sport. Like that's what I did, all-stars, travel ball, Cooperstown, all that stuff. What position? Um, at one point, I was a pitcher. At one point, I was an outfielder. And then when I finished in high school, I was third base. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, by the time I was like 15, 16 – I don't know what I think fuel TV was popping off probably around that time. Yeah. And like <clears throat> that was on TV and I was like, I was like, I used to wakeboard, you know, like this is sick, you know, like tell my, show my friends. They're like, they don't know anything about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to freaking buy a wakeboard and I'm going to, I don't, I didn't have a boat. My parents, my, like my mom and my stepdad, like they weren't water sports people. Like my dad's like from Augusta, Georgia. You know, like he's good old boy. Like yeah. you don't, you know, you don't know anything about that. So it's like, I remember I bought this, I bought the Ronix one. It was like the first year Ronix came together. It was like a 07. It was white with gold. Yeah. Or no, it was, I bought 07. And when the board showed up, it was an 08. Oh. And I was like, well, this is supposed to be black lettering. It's got gold lettering. I was like, look. And they like, they wrote a note like, sorry, we were sold out of the other one. So you got, we just gave you the new one. I'm like, that's sick. <laughs> so I got that. It was like closed toe boots just came out. Had yeah. like it was an all whiteboard. It's like and I remember I put like every sticker possible on it, like Fox, Spy, like every sticker that like the dudes on Fuel TV are like which is so funny. Like I hang out with all those boys now with like Parks, Jimmy, like, you know, I saw their sponsors. I'm like, Oh, those are sick. I want stickers on my board like that. Like all teed up line, oh, like yeah. Ray Rusty does it, you know? Like so it's funny, like, yeah, decked them out. That was the first board. And I would like I would find random people that had boats. Like I remember this one dude, I don't even remember his name. And like, he had like a Yamaha ski boat and I met him through a friend through high school and he would be like, yeah, come out. And I would just go ride with him. And then my freshman year in high school, pretty much the same time where I bought the board, my bet, I met my best friend, David Sullivan and David Sullivan was a golfer, but his family, um, also had a jet ski and then we would take this jet ski to Lake Alatoona. And then like, that's pretty much learned how to get up on the wakeboard again. And we were just like riffing behind a jet ski, just going into coves and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Ripping around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty sick. So like, that's kind of how, like once, once I bought that wakeboard when I was like 15, 16, like that was like, this is awesome. Diving into it a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So, but you're not living on a lake. You don't have a boat. Mm -mm. Do you know how you're finding these people? Because you said you didn't even remember this guy's name. I mean, you Matt like Embernome or something. Like. Yeah, no. Matt Embernome was a kid in high school, and he was like, "Oh, I know. Oh, the kid, dude's name was Travis." He go and the Travis kid like went to some private school. Like I don't like I don't know how we linked up. But I linked up with him, and I pretty much rode with him like a whole summer. And I think like I also I'm trying to think like at that like that time I was meeting like local people that rode um remember i met this joel guy he had like a axis it was like the first year of the vandal edition yeah that thing yeah, was sick so sick and i was like oh this is a real boat and yeah. i remember oh he did lessons gotcha so i hit him up but it was more like yo i just want to come ride like i don't i don't need you to give me a lesson i just i need a i need a boat to ride so i ended up Linking up with him a little bit. He actually taught me how to hit a double up. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, like that 15, 16, 17, it was just like random people. Just whoever had a boat, even if it wasn't a wakeboard boat, I was just like, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's get after it, dude. Yeah. So when does, so you're just riding boat then. Has cable ever entered your, your riding at all? Like you make a trip down to Florida ever? Or is it? Uh, I mean, I watched videos, right? Like I would watch stuff on YouTube and like wanted to do that. But yeah, I mean, OWC was the closest situation when I first started. Um, it's kind of crazy. Like I was, we lived in town Lake in Woodstock, Georgia and like golf courses and everything and like golf course pond. I'm driving down the street and I see this dude wakeboarding, like just grass slides, goes on the water, rolls over. Like, like the green is like there and it's like a hump. So he like goes up, goes on the hump. And then like goes back in the water and I'm like, like, yo, what? 
And I pull into the parking lot, and me and my buddy David, like, walk down there, and, like, we kind of, like, start sussing it out, like, uh, you know. And then, like, he he had some guy driving the winch, and then, like, they just had a tripod, like, a camera on a tripod. And he got down. He's like, what's up, guys? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, so I'm Vinny Knapp. I'm like, what's up, dude? Nice to meet you. Like, oh, crazy. Like, it's so sick. Like, we love Wakeboard. And it's, I've never seen this. Like, what is it? Like, I was winching. I'm like, that's sick, you know? So, like, that was the first time I met Vinny Knapp, which just snowballed into, like, just kept meeting more people. Like, I met him. I ended up meeting this dude's hilarious. Edgar Prez. I don't know if you ever met Edgar Prez. Nope. Church Grip. You know Church Grip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Edgar Prez. Okay. He's OG. I mean, he's, like, Vinny Knapp, Edgar Prez, Chris Moore, Levi Dills. Like, these are all, like, the guys in Georgia – when I'm like 16, 17, that were like wakeboarder, like the Georgia wakeboard crew. And They're I guess same. Quinn, okay. Quinn as well. Cause Quinn was Roswell. He was right down the street. So like that, that was, those, those were like all the guys. So was, I just kept like meeting these people and like getting in situations where I'm like, Oh, okay. Now let's, let's go to Singleton Marine group. We're, we're going to be up there this weekend and we're doing a winch thing. I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'll bring my board. Never, never winch, never hit a kicker, never did anything. It's like a, a demo for like this you know boat whatever and ollie Jerome is there i'm like 16 17 i'm pretty sure i'm 16 and it's like i grabbed the hand i don't know why i don't know why like they even let me on the dock like i had no business being <laughs> on the dock and i remember like they hand me the handle and i'm like i look at ollie i'm go dude i've never done this and he's like what i'm like how do you how do you ride off like I know how to get in the water and start. And he's like, oh, just like lean back. I'm like, okay, lean back, ride off. I'm like, oh, cool. And then I'm looking at the kicker. Like all there, all there is to do is hit a kicker. And I go up this thing halfway and just slip out. I don't know how I didn't just like hit my face or anything and just slip out. And everyone's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm like, well, that's pretty sick. So like that was the first time I hit a kicker or like any kind of like thing besides the boat. Okay. Yeah. And so it just keeps snowballing though, it sounds like. Yeah, I think I think at one point my mom and my brother, we went to OWC. We went to Orlando for some we went to Florida for something. And I was like, We're gonna go. So me and my brother got passes. He's seven years younger. We got passes and rode around. And dude, I remember and I, I love it because I, everyone I've ever took there for the first time or wakeboard, that turn right before the motor tower will destroy people. Eats you alive. And it ate me. Like, I'm just, yay! And just, I mean, water in the back of the eyes, like the worst front edge ever. And I'm like, cool. And I just got, I mean, I just got, I rode always dark because, you know, Adobe has lights. Like, she let me ride all day. It was like the best thing ever because it was like just learning. Yeah. All day. It was so sick. So that was first kind of real cable experience. Mm hmm. Getting, getting after it at OWC. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what, what age is that, do you think, when you went to OWC? It's got to be, like, 17. Okay. I'm definitely still in high school. Okay. Yeah. So when's Ambush Board Co.? Because you worked there for a bit, right? Yeah. So, well, here's a good story. When I was 17, we were going out on the jet ski a lot. And because this, this is my first wakeboard injury. And... There's a YMCA dock in this cove and we would go in this cove and just do laps and he would, you know, David would just be driving with me and do whatever. So I'm like, where he's going straight and this dock's like here and I'm like gone, I'm just gonna like spray the dock. Well, why I'm gone, he's like looking, he's like looking back at me. So he's kind of like starting to turn toward the dock. So the slack, they're slack after I'm just full on cut toward this thing. And I'm not that good yet. Like we're still 180s, 360s, like, we're not in control. We're, We're not in control. And uh, so there's slack. I'm going right at this dock, and it's pretty much a blur for the most part, but somehow I end up on top of this dock sliding across my with my board, my butt, and I'm just sliding, and I hit a cleat, you know, like the cleats oh, you yeah, tie your yeah. butt to. That went through the side of my cheek, like 20 miles an hour. Went through the side of my cheek, and then I fell off and went in the water. And then... Like it, that, and I just like get up. I like pull myself up on the dock, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, "Whoa, that was like crazy!" Like I don't know what just happened. So I start taking off my boots, and I look over, and it's just a pool of blood, like just on the whole thing. And I like see like a hole in my sh my board shorts, and 
lift my like move my shorts and look and i just see like skin it's just flapping blood's just gushing out and i'm like oh like i'm i'm dying like this is it my buddy's coming back he like you know obviously saw everything on the jet skis like ripping i'm like i'm super chill like i'm i'm way more chill than i should be probably i'm just in shock yeah yeah and i'm like david call 911 he's like what i'm like call 911 and like he's he's like at this point he's got his phone he's on the dock and the jet ski is just like floating away and he's like uh okay 911 and he calls and then i'm like all right now come here and just hold pressure on my butt and he's doing that and he's like all right i got you i'm like no like I need you to like push, like you gotta be strong. He's like, I'm pushing as hard as I can. I was like, well, I can't feel you. And I'm like, oh, that's sketch. So then I'm kind of like feeling around with my hand and I feel like my tailbone is just sticking up. Like it's not out of the skin, but it's like, I got a hump back there. I'm like, that's not normal. So like end up getting to the hospital and they just staple the hole and send me on my way. Yeah. ER, I've been, doctors are not that smart. Like, they're smart, but they're not, like, the common sense, like, the dude just got rammed through the side of his butt, and, like, this thing's sticking up, and you're going to be like, oh, staples, and it'll, it'll heal up. Like, yeah, no. No. So I get home. The next day, my girlfriend at the time is over. I go to use the bathroom. I walk out. I about pass out. She catches me. I, I have internal bleeding. So I go back to the hospital. They do a surgery, reconstruction on my sacrum, and it was all free because I almost died because of their negligence, you know? Yeah. So I had a metal plate, and I that was that was pretty much at the end of junior year. It was like, the, you know, like springtime. So I spent, like, the last month of junior year on my stomach on the couch. Had, like, my buddy Jason Holway come over and take my math test and all that stuff. So I actually did, had better grades at the end of the year, but, you know, <laughs> like, wild. Holy shit, dude. That is a wild story yeah pretty insane was there any pain like because you said like, you reached and you felt that there was something wrong like or you just i didn't have i didn't have pain till i pretty much got to the hospital but like on the ride like i started getting really cold because i lost a lot of blood like it was just gushing out so i lost a lot of blood but they had me like rip this like pen i don't know it's like a pain pen or whatever and i remember ripping that and i was like, like laughing gas chill, or something. chill. <laughs> high as a kite dude so yeah, I was pretty good, but yeah, that surgery, like now I have a metal plate in the back of my butt. Looks like I got like a tail removed, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty sick. Not your typical, uh, you know, torn ACL or meniscus, you know. No, I've done those, both those, those are sick, but. I was going to ask about those because I was like, I see you ride with a brace and I was, you know, curious Yeah, about. I don't ride with it anymore. I had, when I would, I don't know, I rode ODBC at one point when in high school, one of the trips, I think me and my buddy Darren O'Neill, who's another guy I rode with kind of toward like my senior year he had a moomba and that was like the first like consistent wakeboard boat but he would never fill up the sacks because his family had noodles and all types of crap in the boat where the sacks would fill up and like they were too lazy to i'm like dude like we gotta fill the sacks like there's no wake like what are we doing and he's like no dude's gonna use more gas and i'm like anyway so that was a whole that was always a whole thing but yeah i'd go to odbc with darren a little bit and i i would just send on kickers like out of control just because you're young and you can handle that and i i jacked up my meniscus so i had my meniscus scoped out when i was like 18 Thank pretty early on huh yeah yeah that was on the right one and then yeah later down the road i blew out the acl and meniscus on the left one yikes yeah dang okay mm. so but anyway so what we after all that i graduated high school and <clears throat> I hung around for like maybe a year and then I at this time I was kind of linking up with the Alabama boys I was already hanging out with like Chris Moore and Quinn and like there was like Mountain Wake which was up north in Georgia and Chris Moore and Quinn and even Vinny at one point they were doing safety first I don't know if you ever dude safety no. first was like the first like that was it was all videos like it was like they would be it was like shred town it was like what shred town did but before them like they were putting out these videos it was like the same kind of thing like their website like vimeo and it was just like safety first and it was safety first was like 
we're gonna sa- it was like Quinn and them's thing for like safety meeting, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go <laughs> fucking smoke down. So like, they made that. It was sick. It, and like Quinn has it tattooed on him, but it's like a general logo with like the star or whatever. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I think it's in the coalition logo, maybe or the, like, maybe the, in the, the Valdosta general, logo or like something. The car? You mean? No, it's like a general, like the like it's like oh, like a general star. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's Army like style. that. Yeah. Gotcha. And it was like yellow. Man, it's crazy. I haven't thought about that stuff in so long. But yeah, they they were doing their own thing. Um. Then yeah, got got done with high school, and at this moment, I was like meeting Alex Graydon, and he went. It's pretty much the first year after high school. He went and moved to Tampa to live with John Dickey. So I went down there for like a week or two and hung out. I was like, oh, this is sick. You know, Tampa's warm, Florida sick during the winter. Um, so then the next year I was like, yo, I'm coming down. And so Bammer Wren was living with Dickey at this moment. Really? Okay. He, they were, Dickey and Bammer were working at McCormick's. I moved in and dude, <laughs> I haven't talked to Scott uh, John Dickey in a while, but his mom owned this house in Tampa. It was in Carrollwood. And there was an extra room, but his mom was a hoarder, like like gnarly, like the gnarliest I've ever witnessed personally. And it was like, you know, just trash bags of like wine corks, like random stuff. And there was a room in the house that I was going to move into, but I had to clear it out. And when I opened the door... Like the door could open, but you couldn't walk in. Like that's how oh, much it's one of those to the ce- to the ceiling. So I'm just like, for like a whole day, like I had a moving truck, all my stuff just didn't move. It was just like a whole day of like extracting. I'm like, do you need like does she need? Yeah, what kind like, of stuff we got in there? You like remember like old printer, like you know, like just random stuff. I remember like making a pile in the living room and like took up the whole living room. I'm like at one point, I was like, do you want to throw it away? Like. Does she want to come get it? He's like, just throw it away. Probably doesn't even know. So, yeah. <laughs> like, she has no idea. She, like, lived, like, 15, 20 minutes down the street was in another house or something. So she wasn't even, like, really worried about it. But, yeah, I moved in there with them, and I spent six months in uh, McCormick's when I was, like, 19, 20. Okay, were you working there or just? I didn't work in McCormick's. I worked at Quiet Flight, which was, like, a billabong surf shop in the mall. So I got a, I got a job there. Um to pay the bills gotcha so. so there was college wasn't in the post high school picture like right, right after high school i tried i think i did like i might have did like <clears throat> one semester community college and then which i don't even know what those grades were because i did not give a crap like at all like my brain was not there i was so like wakeboard like all i cared about was wakeboarding wakeboarding yeah. wakeboarding and it was like school i'm like dude i just like i was a c C grade student. Like I just wanted to get it done get and get out. Like that did that was not my that was not my thing. So I think I did like a semester and a half and I was like, yeah, I'm out. So that's about it. Okay. Spend some time in Tampa then. So after, you know, the six months at McCormick's, what you know, what's what's next? Because you worked at Ambush, right? Was that in high school or is that after it's after. Okay. So got done with McCormick's and that like that pretty much got me really comfortable on the board. Like when I showed up really i mean i could barely do anything and like being around alex graden and dicky and me and bammer were kind of like at the same level at that moment like he was wakeboarding like he's strapped in still oh no he was strapped in uh like i remember the boy he rode an lf board like i remember all of it and like it was that time was so sick because it was just like nobody was really anything yet and it was like we we're just having fun. Like we wake up, we'd go to the park. Someone obviously had to work. It was like either one of them are working. So it was like we would spend there all day. If I wasn't working, I was at McCormick's for six months. So it was really sick. And like that's where we were hanging out with Bradley, shooting photos. Alex was filming his one footer stuff. Like everybody was kind of like getting their foot in the door in the industry there. So it was cool to like be surrounded with that for that moment and kind of get it get a look at what's going on you know yeah and getting some time on board i mean you're you're at a cable park you're not gonna get any more time on the board no you laps know, and laps there. so are you getting hooked up by anyone at that point or no um <clears throat> yeah i think i was flow for lf i went through uh matt long i'm in georgia matt long is awesome that okay. dude is a legend those chops cannot be beat but uh yeah he's a cool dude man he he definitely helped me out um 
also Jenny from Pool Water Sports. She was like, that was my first shop sponsor. So she was an LF. Um, like she carried LF in the shop up there in Lake Lanier. So I was doing uh, pretty much around this time, like into high school and maybe senior year, I was doing the, uh, what are those contests called? The Like the local ones. I Grassroots? Yeah, but it's or like. Or is there like an, uh, there was an official little like tour official, or something? Yeah. Points chase? No. Every, like every state had it around it. They might still do, but it was like, it was boat contest. It was like. Okay. Man, that's, that's a bummer. I can't remember. I didn't know every state had them. Michigan had like the Meyer State Games, but that's probably not related to what this is. Gravel team? INT. INT. Oh, there you go. INT. INT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got in the INT realm and then I met her. So like that's kind of where I got my first sponsorship was like pool and then Matt started hooking me up. But like at that moment too, like he was also like, I was telling him like, I want to be a rep. Like I wanted to be a sales rep. I was going to ask, do you want, at this point, are you like, I want to be a pro rider or are you like, you know, I... I, I think I knew that I was never going to be a great one. So I was like, I love the industry. And I already knew, like, I I knew my lane. You know what I mean? Like, I knew I wasn't going to be, like, this amazing wakeboarder. But I knew people like to be around me. And I, and I understood what he was doing as a rep and why he was giving me a board. Because I'm here to help sell product. Like, you know, I get that whole element of it. So that was really cool to kind of, he was like kind of shaping me up a little bit before I moved out and stuff, but okay. Sick. So it's never like, I mean, you're riding with Alex Graydon, who's a freaking unreal. So, so sick. Yeah. So sick to ride with him. So then you move after that six months, what's happened? You moved back up to, so I moved back up to Georgia. I worked at, um, I worked for my dad. He works at a, uh, a plant. So I was like a maintenance man, just doing all kinds of maintenance work. And in that meantime, terminus was being built right um so terminus was being built and when terminus got i think terminus got built and i it was maybe like i don't even remember when i started helping them out but like it was like jeff and adam and maybe jesse darflinger and then like chase's cousin were starting to work and then like they needed more people so I think Jeff or Adam recommended and you're me. tapped in kind of. The so same, then so. I like kind of got in. I'm like, I would way rather work at a wakeboard park than work doing man work over here. You know, it's like, this is way sicker. Yeah. So yeah, ended up getting in with the terminus situation. They opened up, probably worked there for like two months. And I was, I've always been friends with Derek Davis from Biwake. You, you know him? Yep, yep which is hilarious. Like my senior project was wakeboarding and I rode by his house one day. He lived next door to my best friend, David. And I see wakeboards and like by wake and stuff in his garage. So I knocked on his door and I was like, yo, will you be my project facilitator? I see you like wakeboard. And I had no clue who he was. Like I didn't know who he was at all. I just knocked on this random dude's door and it's Derek. He's like, yeah, for sure. And I was like, yeah, you just need to sign this paper. Like, you don't have to do anything. Just sign this paper, take a photo with me, and, like, we're good. And then, like, maybe that winter I saw him. It snowed in Georgia. It was, like, a winter apocalypse. And he's, like, hammered in his truck just doing donuts. And he's like, yo. I'm like, he's like, I got, I'll put a wakeboard rope on. We'll, do, we'll drag you around. And he's just like, we're just getting whipped around behind his, I mean, it was, like, a red F-150 or something. Just so epic that, like, that's how we, like, met each other. But anyway, so we're, we're at, I'm working at Terminus. I'm kind of like chit chatting with him. And he's like, he's like, you need to be, you need to come work at Ambush. Like we need somebody like they had skateboarders. Cause I mean, did you ever go in that store? Never been. No. So sick. Like, I've heard unreal things about it. Yeah. The sickest board shop you could ever go to. I mean, you had everything and anything you had. The whole left side was like skate. And then the right side was like strapped in. So you had snowboard section and it was all done sick. Like snowboard over here, wakeboards over here, but they didn't have anyone for over here. Like everybody that was in like SEC, like the skate crew, like those were the dudes and they were holding down the skate side, but they needed someone who even knew something about wakeboarding. So that he got me hooked up there, got the job. And it was kind of at that same moment where I was like taking wakeboarding a little bit more serious. And I was like, dude, what are you, 
I, did you guys used to have like a wakeboard team? Like what's, what's the deal with that? And he's like, Oh yeah. La, la. We're like, we got some bi wake riders, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like super hyped up at the moment or so, for some reason. And like, so pretty much me and him kind of just got the fuel refired and like got Quinn on, got them on. Like, I was just like, yo, we need to like put these people on got Blake on. And like, we kind of built this, put Alex, like all these people got put on to the ambush team. Like it was ambush and then there was bi wake. So like we all, it was kind of like the Georgia people yeah. had their own like crew. So that was pretty sick. So I was working there doing that. Terminus is rolling. Like life was pretty good. Like I was, it was epic. Yeah. And I'm still living in my mom's basement. Like it's epic. Oh, okay. So you're not paying yeah. rent. I no, mean, no rent, yeah. dude. Just, wait, just riding and, and running around skating with the boys. So yeah, Terminus, I mean, that's gotta be huge to have, you know, cable kind of in your backyard there where you grew up. So what, you know, how long are you running that for? That whole Biwake ambush Terminus situation. <laughs> I, I worked at Ambush until I came to Alliance in 2017. Really? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I worked at Ambush. I mean, I mean, dude, that was probably like four or five years maybe. I think it was a minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we got a, a early Patreon question from Ollie Jerome. Um, so if you guys do want to see who the guests are early, make sure to jump on that Patreon. You can submit questions and uh, I'll answer them here on the, or we'll ask them here on the podcast. Uh, Ollie is wondering... He wants you to tell us about how you got involved working at the Biwake store, which you just did, um, and what you learned about the industry kind of being maybe a little bit more behind the scenes kind of thing rather than just being a rider. Uh, he's going maybe some juicy stories from meeting brand staff or riders. Hmm. Um, and he's got a second part to the, we can ask after that. But Yeah, I mean, I really didn't know much. And like I said, Derek pretty much took me under his wing. Like, that's like my bigger brother. Like, I would say Derek is – you definitely got to have him on because he's like – Oh his, yeah, his hands have been in the industry for so long. Like he's definitely one of the guys behind the scenes that's always been orchestrating some stuff. So, that man type figure, you know? Dude, yeah, yeah, legend. Um, so yeah, he pretty much guided me, man. I would even if I didn't have work, I'd roll over to the like the Alliance had their spot. I mean, not Alliance. Uh, Ambush had their store, and then probably five minutes down the road, the Biwake offices were there. So I'd go kick it with him in the office, and we'd I'd just sit in that chair in his office, and we'd chat and come up with ideas. And so I definitely learned a lot. Also, selling the product, you know, like I, I, I was definitely one to learn from the beginning, like become profitable, like be sell the product, like that's what. If you're not selling the product, then what are you doing for this brand, this rep? Like you're you're worthless. So like, yeah. I learned that pretty quick. Like if you're not bringing anything to the table, like they're not gonna mess with you. So he definitely like ingrained that into me and just showed me avenues of like what needed to be done. Okay, I, I don't know if Ollie's referring to something with the juicy stories, meeting brand staff or riders. I mean, if nothing's coming to your mind, probably, <sighs> dude. There's probably so, not. There's but. so much. Or maybe, I don't know. I wish I knew. Wish All right. I, well, uh, he's got a good second part. Um, can you share your hip hop playlist because they go hard? <laughs> and he's wondering: Is your taste in music mostly influenced by your Atlanta roots? Yes. Okay. Atlanta music. I mean, like I said, what my 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 really good friend Darren, man, like we would cruise around, walk a flock. I mean, like Gucci Mane, like. All that stuff, dude. There was Atlanta music was pretty sick because everyone like knew what was up. Is Waka Flocka Atlanta? I don't even know, but he claimed it. <laughs> he goes hard, dude. He does absolutely. Yeah, um, I don't know. I I feel like Ollie's asking that question because we had some road. There trips. had to be something. Yeah, yeah was, he was always like, "Yeah, this is sick." And he's such a vibe, dude. <laughs> All right. Well, I say uh, it's time that we spin the LF and Wheel of Questions presented by Liquid Force. Yeah, and wheel of questions. Okay, let's go. So, oh, man. you know, go ahead and grab that that thing down here. I got, you know, I, I customized it pretty aggressively for I this see, one. I see some paintball trivia. That's there hilarious. is paintball trivia on there. We can paintball in a little bit, but uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and spin that sucker. See what we land on. Steal a trick. Steal a trick. So you can pick any one rider, past, present. You get to steal, steal other tricks. Trick, man, that's a really good question. Got to think on that. Um, I said the other day, I forget when I said it, but Joe Battle Day nose press was my yeah. That thing's so nasty. Good. Yeah, it's even sick when you film it and you, 
and you get the clip. Yeah, you've probably filmed some of that. Oh, yeah. That thing's so nasty. Kids leaning up there. Steal a trick. I honestly would have to go, which with I did steal his trick, was Graydon. He would come in toe side, and he would come up, and then he'd grab nose and just crank that thing and, like, come cross body. And, I, and then and then 180. So it was literally a toe side, front side 180, but he would, like, pull it up and stall it out and turn it back and then come. Like, I thought that was, like, okay. so sick. And I remember I stole that and did it in a contest, and I was like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Alex Graydon, where you at, dog? That's my, that's my dog right there, dude. All right. Uh, so I'm going to let you pick one of the trivias because I wanted to do something a little fun. We were talking, yeah, I'm down. We were talking salt life before. So here's what I want to do. Is you pick the trivia question. Yeah. If you get it wrong, Salt Life sticker on your car for one month. If you get it right, Salt, salt Life sticker on my board or car for a month. Paintball trivia, like the whole paintball thing is pretty wild. Like I don't really know much. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, was, I wasn't sure when you came in here. I wasn't sure if you're like a paintball nerd. And like, I just, I pretty much dove into that COVID year and like, okay, it kind of just went off. <laughs> so, so pretty recent. Pretty recent. So for the listeners, we got paintball trivia, lemon trivia, lime trivia, obviously because citrus, and then Atlanta trivia. Right? I'll, I'll do the paintball trivia just because I would, I would like to. Yeah, I would. you want that salt life sticker is what you're saying. <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> okay. Like, and people have put salt life stickers on my car before. Like the, that would not be anything. Uh, okay. I mean that kind of makes sense. All right. So I mean this one could be either really easy or it could be hard. I don't know. What what year was the first ever paintball game played? <sighs> And where was it? Probably 89. 81. Oh, 81? Yeah. Dude, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts on paintball, and like, I thought I was up to date, but... Dang. Dang. Yeah, I mean... 81? You're not that far off. Yeah, 81. This was in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said the first paintball gun was invented in like the 50s or 60s, and they used it to mark trees. Like lumber that. people? I believe that. Yeah, I went, I went, I dove right in on paintball, so... Yeah. <laughs> I know a little bit more than I probably should on it's paintball. Lo it's right low-key really sick. I dude, I used to play paintball quite oh, a you bit. Did? Yeah, yeah. What in happened? High school. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of fell out of it. Me and my buddy got into pump like at the end. Oh yeah, a little which pump. was super fun. But Sick. yeah, I don't know. I guess just kind of like didn't have a squad anymore and just yeah. You gotta have you gotta have it. a crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I played paintball off and on through my whole life, like once or twice a year there, and then like I was in Australia with Shane, and I'm like have a cart full of stuff, and I don't know what I don't know why I went down that road, and like. I was like, Shane, I think I'm going to buy this stuff. And he's like, no, what, what are you going to do? Why are you going to buy paintball stuff? He's so funny whenever I bring ideas to him. And I'm like, I'm doing it. And I purchase, go, go to bed, and I get back from Australia. There's a whole box at the house. I'm like, sick. And then I didn't go play. Like, I Really? Well, I just didn't have, like you're saying, you got to have a crew. Yeah, so yeah. Like, and I'm over at BT's one day, and he's like, oh, yeah, I used to play paintball. I'm like, really? He goes up in the attic, starts pulling down the stuff. I'm like, dude, we're going to go play. So we started going to play, and Bob Sovin was playing at the time. Really? He was just like, I saw like photos of him taking random people. So I'm like, oh, let's go. Let's go to Orlando Paintball. Go, and then like that just kicked it off. Like, I take things way too far. So, I, you know, I follow you on Instagram. I've been following you for a while. You're like big into paintball, though. Like, so when I played, I didn't play. We didn't have like a speedball. Is that what you guys call it? Yeah, I think it's or speedball, tournament ball. ball, one of them. We don't. We didn't have anything like that. It was just like there's this place called Hell's Survivors in Michigan. It's like a massive like outdoor yeah. field. Yeah. So we played that a lot, but yeah. I never did the competition yeah. stuff. The That's competition serious. stuff's like very like fast, athletic, like very intense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what kicked it off, but I remember I like Facebook messaged some team. I was like, "Yo, like, would love to come out and see what what's the vibe, you know? Let me come out there." And then three weeks later, I'm driving up to Georgia for a paintball tournament, like first one. And Snowball. I like, wow have no clue what i'm doing and end up winning the tournament and like won the season like it just kind of like i did i didn't stop winning like we just won so i'm like this is sick like it's a natural the paintball too <laughs> and like it goes divisions it goes like division yeah i was six. gonna ask how is it it goes division six five four three two and division one is semi-pro and then you go pro and it and it works like it's a point system so like when you win, you get win a certain amount of points and you keep ranking up. So like you can't be like really good and play in low division and whoop people's butt. So yeah, won like the whole D five that year. The next year came up, played D four with the same crew, and then like switched to another team. Want like just kept winning, and then halfway through that year, um, 
these this other team was like yo come play with us come to chicago i'm like cool never traveled like to an internet like a national event go play d2 with them we placed third and i had to play like the whole time because my buddy was injured I'm like oh that's sick so now i'm playing with them d2 and then next year we go semi-pro so it was just like within three years i'm playing semi-professional paintball i'm like what is going on <laughs> it's sick like i'm obsessed with it to where like my chick almost left me because I was like, every weekend I'm paintball. Like, it was just like, paintball's paintball. not cheap, dude, is it? No, no. I mean, actually, no, now, I would say paintball's expensive. And now it's free for me. Like, it's sick. So you're semi-pro. That's what, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, well, like, te- yeah, semi-pro because I played pro in Europe last year. I went and played pro in Europe. Um, and then this year, I'm like on a, on a, I'm on a pro team's like practice squad. So they have 10 total and they're only taking eight to the event. So for the first one, I'm not going. But I'm still playing semi-pro with another team. But so it's like I'm like almost there. But like it's free paintball with them. It's free paintball with the semi-pro teams. So like I'm at the point now where it's like everything's paid for. So it's like it's legit now. It's yeah. pretty cherry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So actually, I mean, you, we can put this back. But thanks to Logan Force mm-hmm. for that. Uh, Aleph and Wheel of Questions. Um, so I, I, we're on paintball right now. I'm curious. Paintball and wakeboarding are both you know niche sports. I would say. Um, with a decent bear to entry, I know obviously boat. You're not going to compare with the paintball gun, but like paintball yeah. gun, all the gear, you're racking up a few G's probably, right? Yeah, I mean you're you could have a good setup with everything you need for probably like 700 bucks. Really? Yeah. Okay. And be competitive and like, yeah, yeah. Like most Easy. hobbies, it's like you don't need. Yeah, it's like, like buying your. You board. need the hobby. Grip. You got to get. Just, you got to get the board. You got to get the gun, the hopper, the tank, the whole thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I mean, what are some differences and similarities? Because you've you've been in wakeboarding, water sports for a long time, and now you're kind of diving fully into paintball are there any so similar like really? the way the industries work and the pol- politics and like all that bs it's so funny and like i'm already ready for it because i've already been through it with wakeboarding and like they're like oh like so and so but you know this guy this feels this way i'm like dude this is so similar and it's sick because like paintball was super big at one point and so was wakeboarding it was like that pre-crash like extreme sports like 2000 what three to seven dude they were saying to, in 2006 again paintball nerd terminology yeah. but it was like the third action sport in 2006 yeah. it had like over 10 million people yeah. like i mean crazy. it was on huntington beach like big tournaments people were being paid i mean still people are a few people are getting paid a hundred thousand dollars a year but it's like paintball was was bopping just like wakeboarding it was everything was extreme sports were sick yeah. and then everyone's like oh that's too much fun we have no money like everything just died it was like so it's it's coming back like it's it's definitely um they're doing a lot of cool stuff with paintball right now and the way they broadcast it and stuff as well. But it's like, it's just like, it's just like Wake Warner where it's so niche. It's like, how do you get the public to relate to like watching it? Yeah. That's the hardest part. I think. And you, yeah. And you got to get those out of industry brands to like help you do that. Yeah, They had like Goose <clears throat> Island sponsor a bunker and like a couple of random things. But the people are always like, Oh, like you, you know, Red Bull people like get Red Bull. I'm like, dude, Red Bull ain't touching this dude. This is not like y'all have no idea. <laughs> Like Dude, if Red, Bull, like, if Red Bull was going to do it, they would have done it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, go to like Bang Energy or something, you know? Like, For real, yeah. yeah. Get the Try something else. Get the, the Amp Energy from the fringe ones. Okay, so that's that's interesting. I mean, any anything else you notice between the two? I mean, other than, you know, the political side and stuff? Uh, I mean, it's a team sport, so like, it's different at the same time, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's kind of cool to have that camaraderie of a team. Because wakeboarding, you're so solo. I mean, you got crews, you, you're riding with your buddies, but you're solo, like... You're kind of out for you. You win for yourself. Exactly. Yeah, and paintball. And like paintball, it's like, you got to believe in your brothers. Yeah. And that's what's, that's what's cool. Cause it, that's what makes it so different for the switch up. Cause it's like, I'm all about myself. And now it's like, I'm working with people. So that was cool. Okay. I'm, I'm about it. I'm definitely, maybe I'll start throwing the dude. You got to come out. I still got my gun, but I got, a- I got extra stuff. I have so much crap. Like, I, I get go, fucking lit up, dude. If I was out dude, there. I'll be right behind <laughs> you. I'll be, I'll be ready. I'll be telling you what to do. We'll be lighting them up, dude. We 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 will see. I promise you, we'll go. All right, dude. I I'd, go I'd pretty down. much every weekend, and like Sundays, it's packed out. We'll just play random people. We'll we'll crap on noobs. It'll be sick. That's, yeah, uh, it'll be I, good. I'm down, dude. Yeah, we'll make, we'll make a video, bro. Well, let's do it. We'll dude, make a video. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was all in on paintball for. That's, that's probably sick. three, four years. I dude. feel like everyone's played paintball at some point in their life. Definitely. But yeah, it's, yeah I definitely just took it to the extreme. <laughs> well, I feel like with, with the team sport aspect you're saying, that's like, that's where I think it would be cool is if I had like some buddies that 
Yeah, you're you're every weekend you're with your your buddies. And it's not like I mean, you probably know better than this, but I feel like you can kind of play it for like a lot of years. Like obviously yeah. you got to be fast and stuff, dude. They're like, like the best players in the world. Some of them are forty years old. You know, yeah. I mean, they're still in shape and like you know they're not fat people running around like. But yeah, like honestly, the most average age of a professional paintballer is probably like mid thirties. Seems like that makes sense because I mean you got to have a little bit of money at least to kind of that. I mean, just get into I it. Mean, at that point when you're pro, everything's paid for. That's but true. It's more like experience. Like you've you've played the game for twelve years, twenty years. Like you, you don't have to be the fastest because you're smarter. That's what I was also you. thinking is like the game managing aspect of it. It's like chess. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. You have codes and like it's five on five, and it's funny when I go play people like no one like you people forget to breathe. Like you got to breathe. Like the the buzzer goes off and like no one's breathing. And you're like yelling and you're not breathing next thing you know like you're just tunneled you're just like this but homie over here is telling you so-and-so's two feet in front of you but you can't hear him because you're just like ah, you know and then you get dunked on and then <laughs> lit up dude it's sick <clears throat> i mean it, it hurts right but not like I mean, uh, wait, a good amount of pain it hurts outside. when you don't know you're gonna like if you're just standing on the sidelines chilling talking to your boy and you get hit you're like oh wow. but if like you're playing i'll take five and just stare at him like Bring it next What's time. up? Yeah. Because <laughs> they don't, like, the adrenaline, you're pumping, you know it's coming, you're chilling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I say we dive into Jamboree. I don't have a whole lot on Shredtown Jamboree, but you were, uh, oh man, you were in dad cam. And there Dude, was some was, good footage on that dad cam. I was heavy dad cam. I just, the whole reason I started filming, because I blew out my knee. And, and it honestly started because I was, the skate, the skate guys I was hanging out with at ambush at work didn't have anyone to film. And it was like the guy before me that got fired because he told some customer to F off, which was pretty sick, like justified. What the customer do? You remember? It, it was just like some dad and kid. And he was like, pretty much like his name's Max Yoder. He's, he's done thrasher stuff and all this stuff. I was going to say, why does that Yoder name sound familiar? Yeah. He's like, he's, he's a, he's a rad dude, but he, pretty much like helping this guy out and like s something happened and the dad looks to the kid and goes something like and that's why you don't want to do that like be this guy's son you know like something like that and he just goes yo you can get the f out of here bro and like just pretty much told him off and then he got fired like lee elliott's like can't do that bro like yeah sorry we're gonna have to let you go so like once he left like they weren't filming anything anymore so like when i blew my knee out I weirdly felt like it was my responsibility for some reason to take on yeah. because that's what at the same time I knew at that moment because it was a triple crown when I blew my knee out and it was at that moment that I realized wakeboarders don't make money <laughs> like I haven't I blew my knee out luckily like I'm underneath my parents insurance like everything's gonna be Gucci my mom's gonna help me out with paying the, the copay but like what am I doing I'm pro I mean I don't know. I'm probably like 20 something years old. I'm like, switch well, terminus is like when you're 19, 20 or whatever, 21, right? I think I was like 23, 23. Okay. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you're nearing that 26 years old going off the insurance. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like one of those wake up calls. So yeah, I started filming. So anyway, ended up being like, yo, I'll go out to Jamboree. Like I'll, I'll send it. We'll just, what do you want to do? Like, I'm, cause it's always me and Derek. It was always like me and Derek. Like, what do you want to do? I go out there. And, uh, yeah, I went out there with a dad cam. That dad cam was my family's camera from like when I was a kid. Oh, so it's a legit OG dad cam. Oh, it's legit. And that's how it my has dad to be. Filmed. Kids out there, Don't that's how it. it has to be. I just went on Amazon and purchased a fisheye for it and put like a a top handle on it and stuff. Like rigged it out. Yeah, yeah. It was so sick. I love that. I still have it. But uh, yeah, I went out to Jamboree. And that was the same time that Quinn and Wes went to the Jamboree for the first time. So it was like, you know, like this kind of like, I'm not saying like we were like not in the scene, but we weren't really like in the scene like everyone else was. And it was sick to like start going there. And it was like Wes and Quinn are getting vibed with the boys. Like it's good. Like you see them being accepted. It's cool. And I'm like, at this point I pretty much know everybody and I'm just like putting a camera in everyone's face. And it was, it was a good time, man. So, okay. So that's, I mean, this can kind of lead into Alliance. I feel like, but is that the first time, not this, um, not the dad cam thing, but when you started filming the boys at 
at Ambush and Byway? Because that the first time you kind of really picked up a camera and started yeah. filming seriously? Yeah, so like I bought a film camera at a thrift store. It was a, can- it was a Canon A1 film camera. And like I remember this because I remember posting photos and like Terminus was still just clay dirt everywhere. And yeah, so I was messing around with that, learning like the basics of just shutter speed and all that stuff. And then realized that I could film and clock hours for filming. I'm like, that's not work. Like I'm in the streets with the boys. That's not work. Like, let's do this. Bought like a Sony a6000, I think at the time. Just kind of like dropped like a little bit of cheddar on that. Got that stuff. And like, yeah, we were filming like, and that like when I first started filming skating, I sucked. And like, I felt bad because like, I was like the wakeboard dude at Amherst. I was going to say, did you skate growing up? It didn't I did. A little I bit. did. Okay. So like I could, I could skate and, and like filming it's was a fine. Cams, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could skate as fast as all, all they were. I just couldn't do the tricks, but yeah, it definitely took them a minute to be like, who the frick is this wakeboard dude? Like trying to film us. So like once I got through that and like was showing like, yo, look at the clip. He's like, Oh, that's sick. You know? Like, so once we got past that, it was like, I would like work like, two or three days at the shop and then i would work like two days in the streets and i would like go over to the offices grab the ambush van and and, like they would cover gas and just go pick dudes up throw bean bags in the back of the chair and be like yo what spot we going to like i was just we just went it was so rad it was so sick yeah we had to do like a ride channel piece one time so like we went and filmed for ride channel and then kind of toward the end we were filming um, and I, we didn't have a name. We were just filming, stacking clips. And then after I left, I ended up putting that piece together and went on Thrasher. And I was going to say, so I, I was going to ask yeah. about the Thrasher piece. So that was uh, towards the end there. Yeah. I, I, I don't even remember what it was called. But yeah, that was sick. I like that in the uh, in the show notes. So, okay. So then Alliance. So you said you were at, at Ambush Biwick for a good bit. Mm-hmm. How does this snowball or transition into Alliance? Yeah. Alliance? So 2016. Yeah, 2016. I'm hanging out with Blake and Alex. Like, everything's cruising. Like, you know, I'm filming a lot at this point. And so we come up with the idea, like, we want to do big parts. Like, Blake needs his first, like, big edit. So we talked about it. Everybody at uh, Ambush was down for me to spend my time doing that. Also, at the same time I'm doing Alex's. So if I'm not filming Blake, I'm pretty much going to Alabama and hanging out with Alex for a week and shooting behind the boat and all that. So I filmed Alec Cruzen and untamed like at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And then that they were supposed to be surf expo pieces. And that's like what we did. Like if anybody was coming out with video, like when you dropped it, it was at surf expo. So that was the game plan filmed all summer with both of them. And I'm a week out. And I haven't edited either one. So my best friend Dave lived in Daytona. I'm like, hey, I'm going to come down and I'm going to bring my computer and I'm just going to lock myself at the beach. I mean, I'm going to surf and I'm going to edit. Like, that's all I'm going to do. And I lock, I did, bought like a little pop up table from Walmart and I just put it in a corner and I was just mobbing, dude, just grinding. Grinded out both edits and go to expo and alex's video got a good recognition but for some reason like blake's video like went off i don't know if it was like the music choice or whatever but like i remember i mean i can tell you it was a good fucking video it was (laughs) i'm people tell me they still watch it today i do yeah yeah it's crazy but i specifically remember sitting there watching it and Bill McCaffrey looks back at me and he's pretty sauced at this point. Like he's definitely chugged. Oh, Teddy Brewski's deep. Yeah. Chugged a few not beers. And uh, he looks back at me and he goes, This is fucking sick. Like verbatim. And I'm like, the guy that runs Alliance. Yeah, you knew who me. he was. Like, yeah, yeah. I knew who he was, but like I didn't he didn't really know me, like he knew of me. But little did I know because at the moment, 2016, Taylor Hanley was Alliance filmer. And he was on his way out like he was done he was over it i didn't know that he was really like putting my name in the basket taylor was yeah oh sick so like me and taylor were really you know i 
we were really good friends. I can't remember like how that whole friendship happened, but like we were pretty good buddies. Like he is hilarious, dude. He is one of the funniest Canadians I've ever met, and especially when he gets around Dylan and everybody like Nick Dorsey, like He's going off. Those dudes are hilarious. But yeah, so he kind of told me that at one point he was going to like kind of make that happen. But what really sealed it was after Expo, Chuck, who owned Bywake, um, he put in like kind of like the final word with Bill because it was at that point where I really wasn't making any money filming with uh, Ambush and Bywake. It was just like I did it because it was better than working in the shop. But, you know, like 12 bucks an hour is like, like, what am I going to do with that? Yeah. So. I don't even know if it was that much. It might have been like 10 bucks an hour, maybe nine. And it was like, yo, like I need a raise, you know? And he's like, well, I can't, I can't do that. What I can do is I can put you somewhere else to where you could make more money. So he reached out to Bill. And I guess at the same time, Bill already kind of was having me in his mind. So it all worked out. He like pretty much teed that up for the phone call, got the phone call. And then by like January of 2017, it was like sealed sealed up like you're you're coming to florida okay yeah so what's the what's the uh you know the job description i guess on that phone call <clears throat> dude the job description <laughs> stupidest thing ever love you bill but like i remember looking at that thing i'm like <laughs> like my job and still my job description is i don't have one like i really don't have one like if i'm not a videographer i'm not a, just a producer i'm not just the editor like and like that job description was like, do this, do that, this. I'm like, so just do everything. Like, it's kind of like, you have to be a jack of all trades. You got to manage the shoots. You got to film them. You got to edit them. You got to help come up with this idea, that idea. And all. so it's like your, your job scope is just so wide, Yeah, you know? But, you know, after talking with, you know, with them, I understood what like the goal was. And obviously I've seen all my friends before do it and whatnot, so... Yeah, I remember, and I remember like not being too stoked on the number in the beginning. You know, it was supposed to be like kind of like a part time gig, and I don't know like if they were going through something at that moment. Um, but yeah, and it it ended up happening, ended up getting getting to a number where we agreed on, and then yeah, moved down. I remember I, I, remember I bought the Tacoma. I saw you had a Tacoma out there. Yeah. yeah, I ended up buying a new truck. I was like, cool, I'm gonna have consistent income. Need a truck throw wet stuff back there, wakeboards, whatever. Let's run it. And then drove down, moved in with Jimmy LaRitch. I was going to say, where do you move down? Where do you, where do you move in when you get down here? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was coming to Orlando a good bit. You know, I honestly, I stayed with Shane the most. Shane, like Cody Hess was living with Shane. Well, so many people live with Shane. But at the time, Cody Hess was living with him and I'd come stay. So then I was hanging out with Jim and I pretty much just was trying to figure out who had an empty room. And he was like, yeah, come on down. So moved down with him. In the week, I went down like I flew my. I think I've. I might have flown down. I I came down like a week or two before just to like assess like what I needed to bring. And I wake up the first morning. I stayed in the guest room, and I wake up, and Jimmy's like in the kitchen, just like staring at the sink. And I don't really know Jimmy that well yet. And I'm like, Yo, dude, you are you good? He's like, No. I'm like, well, what's up? He goes, look outside. His G is underwater, bro. <laughs> it is underwater. <laughs> and I go, yo, that's not good. He goes, no. I'm like, well, what happened? He's like, I don't know. And like, the, he's like ghost white, like has no words. I'm like, cool. Like, can you take me to the airport? You know, like... <laughs> Dude. I don't mean to be what? like a uh, buzzkill here. Yeah, like I guess the Nauti but... guys came over, pumped it out, got it out. But it was like for a moment, the like exhaust pipes were having a situation where, like, where they let water in. Interesting. I think like a couple of the riders had that situation. So it wasn't well. Jimmy's fault. No, but he, like, drain plug he like thought it was for sure. He's like, I don't well, know. dude, you have a that's over $100,000 boat at that oh, time dude, for sure. Yeah. It's like G23. Yeah, easily. Oof. Yeah. That was. That was funny. But yeah, then then drove down and I lived with Jim for probably a year, maybe a little more. And then he sold his house and he moved to Oregon because he went to 
him and Jack Blodgett were doing like a boat dealership or some, say, yeah. some situation Dealer out there. Bay. Okay. So he was like transitioning out of riding. And I remember watching pretty much that whole year. It was like Jim going through like the process of like understanding, like I'm not going to be a rider. I'm losing pro model. I'm, I'm losing this wakeboarding isn't going to sustain me anymore. And it was like, it was really cool to see him kind of like switch the gear and like figure out what he was going to do to stay in it, but like make money. And then now he's, now he's in Miami and he's crushing. He's crushing. surfing with Tom Brady. Dude, he is the guy. If you go to Miami and it comes to like wake boats, like he's the guy. He always seems to any Red Bull thing, anything like that, like he's the guy. It's so sick. Yeah, it's so sick. And his spots, his spots sick. It's like an apartment, but like me and Shane went and stayed with him not too long ago. And it's just like I could I could I get it. Miami is not for me. I hate Miami. Yeah. But like his spot, last weekend, yeah, not yeah. You know. Did you go to the boat show? No, I did not go to the boat oh, show. Okay. I, I did some boogie boarding, dude. <laughs> no, I didn't actually, but yeah. Uh, okay, so the, I have a lot of questions on Alliance, obviously, but mm -hmm. when you start, yeah, you know, first, let's say two, three, four, five, six months, are you digging it? You like it? Like, is it kind of fitting what you wanted to do? I love it. I'm just, you know, I'm learning the flow of, like, how the Alliance guys work, but um. At the time, Bradley Rutledge is still there. I think Garrett just exited. Probably right this time, and yeah. Bradley became editor. And the magazine was still rolling. So, yeah, it was definitely, like, hit the ground running. Which, I mean, I was already kind of, like, doing the same stuff when I showed up. So it wasn't, like, a learning curve, per se. But it was more, like, the workflow of what they do and, like, timelines and like yo we're gonna drop this and like definitely had more responsibility than what i previously had at like English. Yeah. so what are you what are you doing because you said your job scope's big obviously you're are you doing a lot of filming for you know edits product reviews like what's at the beginning what's it look like at the beginning it's it's a little bit of what do you want to do you know like i think at, i think i was doing like monday mashes yep just just trying to feed the beast for the website like we were still really focused on like trying to put stuff on the website so i was like trying to come up with concepts of like things that were easy to do um but then also they had like you know people would buy sponsor pro like people would pay for like um like a certain amount and they would get ads in the magazine we would do content you know it just depends on the package that they would that they would sell them on yeah. or whatever so it's like you know it might be like a mystic shoot so we'll go do a mystic shoot and then like we'll create all their assets for their product and it's very a wide array of things or go to a contest shoot that it was just like anything that was like we had our hands in i was pretty much going and like filming and editing or trying to coordinate that stuff so yeah definitely was there any big learning curves i mean from transitioning from you know by wake ambush to like you were saying alliance with deadlines kind of more responsibility that you had no, just or, just kind of cleaning my crap up, like just a little bit more professional, learning color grading a little more. I don't know. It was just like those guys already had a system, so it was like learning their system of like, like I remember trying to f learn how to put a video on the website was like, I mean, I couldn't do it now. I haven't done it in so long, <laughs> but like it used to piss me off. Take this code, copy this, put this here, but then don't click this. And I'm like, dude, this is... It's got to be easier than that. It's got to no, be. It's got to be. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that website website's pretty jacked up when it comes to the back end. Is it just like a little it's older just, or updated? It's, just, or? it's definitely old. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. But. For sure. Still runs. <laughs> Dude, you're still running. Honestly, yeah. I don't. I haven't I haven't put anything on there in forever. Usually. So, I mean, I guess we can kind of get into the more current stuff. Are you responsible for updating the website still or is that? No. Like my, anything? I'm at the point now like realistically i work like 10 days out of the month oh, okay so you're not full-time with the lines no, anymore no gotcha so i'm pretty much part-time unless there's big projects like every other month there's like a big thing where it's like okay we got to go shoot for a week and we got to build out all this stuff so then i'll work more because there's budget to do so yeah but yeah as of right now it's like you know we're just kind of the beginning of the year is always slow for anybody any brand any filming anything around here so yeah, like the last two months, I've only worked like ten days. But I guess, I guess we can kind of say it here. Like me and Shane, 
have started pointless productions or or starting so i guess this is first yeah, time let, hearing that let's let it drop baby that's the plan like we i've built we built the website everything like instagram facebook's like everything that you kind of do on the back end to get it rolling now we're just trying to get our first few clients and stuff like that like i've done i do side work a lot that's how i make that rest of my income big freelance guy doing all sorts of stuff a lot of stuff but now it's like you know shane wants to kind of obviously make more money too you know lf has only taken up so much of his time so it's like why don't we just team up and yeah do it you know i don't i mean honestly i don't care if it's weddings if it's like golf stuff i mean we've we went and shot like a watch company with navy seals like do it all like whatever run it okay pretty much anything like outside of the water sports industry because like i don't want to it's because it's weird like i'm pretty much almost going to do the same thing that alliance is doing as far as like a media agency but you won't poach or touch anything but i'm not poaching touch. any of the boat stuff like pretty much water sports i'm not going to touch yeah yeah unless it's like like i shoot nautique stuff but that's solo just me that i go through um ryan wolf who does all the nautique stuff but alliance doesn't do anything with nautique so that it's all gucci yeah, yeah. you know so it's like yeah it's good it's it's in the works which is sick i like the name where did you guys come up with the name for that yeah i don't know i saw it on like some dvd or vhs some or old something. movie or something yeah. i don't know about it. <laughs> some guy with a beard was like yo i know i know a guy love that okay so kind of like a digital media video like all sorts of just yeah marketing just a type. media agency okay so if you need video we're, we're you guys up let's go yeah it. hopefully by the time i mean i don't know is that are you guys like launching that sooner rather than i later, mean everything or, is like is it everything is live there? but i just haven't like i've got the the promo reel and like i've i mean all that's my stuff for the most part but like we need to you know get stuff together for instagram to kind of like put it out there a little bit yeah more. then i can share it and he can share it and be like yo blah blah blah. be but, in people's heads but people have found people about have already thing. found it and being like yo so st sick to see this come back i'm like well it's probably not gonna be what we're not gonna be filming wakeboard movies not like one. we could <laughs> if, if a brand came to us want to do it you know yeah, if the we money's could. there yeah and i mean there's a wakeboard movie coming out this spring so yeah, you're so. right you're right maybe by pointless productions who knows you know what you're right we should we should link that up <laughs> Okay, uh, I got a little bit more of a serious question when it comes to working on Alliance. Yeah. Um, I, I got a few, but the first one is, what are some of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to being on the media side of water sports and boating? Biggest misconception, as in like what? Like just so guys, that, wakeboarders, people that are like doing this stuff, their misconceptions about what maybe Alliance's job is or what Alliance does or what Alliance can do or you specifically can do. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people think that, like, we're doing a lot of lame crap. And it's like, they're not wrong to a certain extent. Like, when I first started, we were f still focused on, like, creating content, like, that was in-house, you know, organic. Like, that's just what we wanted to do. But that doesn't pay the bills. And now, like, the magazine pretty much supported that. Like when I showed up and I was doing the current leads and like all the fun stuff that I really enjoyed and I feel like people liked, like that kind of got nipped in the bud when the magazine stopped being funded by all the brands. And it's like, okay, well now we can only do the things that people are paying us to do. Cause it just doesn't, you can't pay somebody to do something if you don't have money. Yeah. You know? So unless somebody's like paying us to do something, we just, don't do it so now that's what kind of sucks because it's like alliance originally like people would go on alliance.com every day to see what's new which which we i i, I mean honestly I, I check that ever so often but we still put some stuff up but it's i mean bro when i first started people would send us stuff and there's so much trash that gets sent in and it's like you're crazy if you think this is going to go up you're absolutely lost there's still one guy that messages I'm obviously not, I don't even remember his name. I'm not going to say his name. I don't know who he is, but he is a trip, dude. Like some, like he is always like, yo, like just put this to edit together. I'm like three time world champion. Like never heard. Like, like <laughs> Got who that are you trying to fool, dude? Like, <laughs> oh, it's so, so wild, man. Like a fuck, like two minute intro. And no, it's just the worst things I've ever seen in my life have come through my email. But. Well, dude, there was this, I don't know if you've heard me say it, but I've said it on here before. Yobeat was an old snowboard. Yo, I know Yobeat. And they uh, yeah. did a thing called rejected edits. 
Yeah. And they would grade them. And that, like, it's pretty aggressive, but, like, sometimes the dude. sport needs some of that shit, dude. If you're getting a lot of trash, you know what? Yeah, we'll throw it up, and we're going to grade it. You get a dude. D minus, because, like, this was garbage, bro. <laughs> I, I would love that people would argue too. Like we would respond like, "Hey, like I just don't think like it's at the caliber." Thanks for sending in. Blah, blah. Yeah, blah blah. Or like give them a note like, "Hey, like intro." Like I would try to like help them. Like yeah. yo, like the flow is not there. Like the song, like things aren't on beat. You know, like simple editing things. And some people would like get so can't bummed. take the criticism. I'm like, dude, like who do you think you are? Like who? I don't even know. No one knows who you are. And you just hit me with an edit that's seven minutes long with like five hits on the same kicker doing a 360. You know, you're like, you're, it's just, like, I don't know, delusional. Delusional. <laughs> the standard is the standard yeah. and you got to be there. Yeah, but nowadays I don't feel like there's a lot of stuff coming in. At it's least, just, I feel like it's probably all going on Instagram anyway. It is. So it's like. Yeah, so know. like as far as like good edits to be posting and staying up to date, like it's not really flowing into where it's like a priority anymore. Yeah. Definitely. So, I mean, kind of on that same topic is how do you balance or how does Alliance balance, you know, creating content that needs to be created, pays the bills with the content that, you know, the core wakeboarders of the wakeboard community wants to see? Yeah, I think honestly, that's why I did Citrus. I think because like I was doing stuff for Alliance and I'm like, well, I've got to do these things, but like the things I want to do, we can't do. So I'm like, I'm just going to do it myself. So I think that's like kind of why that started now that I think about it. But the balance is really whatever. I mean, Nick Belmont also works for us, but, you know, he's also doing his own side stuff as well. So it's like, unless I just have a ball of energy to want to make stuff, like we're just not going to because it's not on my plate to do. Like it's not, I'm not told to do this or that. So if anything like editorially comes out, it's typically just because I, I just wanted to do it. Yeah. So, so it sucks. It sucks for sure. Like I would love the editorial stuff is what, you know, that's just how I started doing. And like I miss doing the currently is I miss doing stuff like that. that shows personality or just even just just clips and putting stuff out. But it's just it's just not the way it shapes up anymore. Definitely. So, I mean compounding on that is how has the media landscape changed since you've been at alliance or working you know yeah with them? i mean the formats of everything is crazy like everything's so social media like a video on youtube is like your landing page now it's not the website it's like youtube is where you send people to get the clicks um but it's 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 super interesting like the whole beast of social media, like trying to figure it out still. Like what do, what do I need to cut up here and how do I need to start this video so it engages and goes on this page and blows up for this brand because they're paying us to do this and that. It's like learning that side of stuff has been super interesting because I honestly don't care about social media like that. Like I, I, was gonna I don't even post that much anymore. Like I used to like care about what my page looks like and I'm like, dude, I'm so burnt on like looking at everything and posting stuff and making stuff for it i'm like dude i don't care about my own stuff like got no time for that here's dude. some paintball clips buddy yeah <laughs> that's how that's how i feel you know so i mean what do you think the the future looks like in terms of media landscape when it comes to you know wakeboarding or any anything like that i don't i think it's pretty much where it's at like it's you know if if you're gonna see like cool organic style stuff as far as like what west and them are doing or um, anybody else that's like filming parts or anything like that's going to have to be on those people. Like it's not, it's not going to be us. It's just, it just logistically doesn't make sense. Yeah. And if it did, then we would, but if it just doesn't. So like, unfortunately, like I think, you know, movies and all that stuff, it's got to be from like the core of it, which is sick. Like that's what it, you know, that's what it comes from, but it does suck that like Alliance isn't like that forefront for, current media like it was it just just the way it shaped out you know yeah definitely and that, that's mostly like the industry and just brands that bail out you know brands come in two three years and then they bail out and it's like you just got rolling and it's all it's a whole thing man like media in general and wakeboarding i think 
Yeah, I don't know. That's a really good question. I like that one. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Yeah. It really is because for me, I just do what I'm told for the most part. Like, hey, this brand wants you to go to Miami and shoot this new boat for the reveal. And I'm just, you know, making promo stuff. And, like, nobody that's, like, it's in the, like, us, you know, like, we don't give a crap about that. Like, I, I truly don't care. I care when I'm doing it and I want to do my best. Sure, but like, yeah. I don't, I don't really care about that stuff. So I know everyone else doesn't care about that. So like that bums me out occasionally, but it's like, that's what these companies are paid for paying us for. So like, you got to kind of go where the bread is, you know, it's like, yeah, for sure. It just is what it is. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's a little bit more on some board brands to invest more into their riders and more into what they're doing. I was gonna say, what would you like to see? Maybe I think that's what I would that. like to see. You know, I think like, I think LF does a good job. Like we do these team trips and stuff to film their product stuff. But I think even like either, either support the riders and give them a, like a backing to make cool stuff or do it yourself. I think like the board brands could definitely step up with, like, I think like Slingshot came out with movies and stuff. Like what, like, why don't we do that again? Yeah. Like, you know, like, all those did really well. I mean, I mean, in my opinion, like really well. So it's like, I think that some board brands should be get back into doing movies and, and or just try to make more content than just shooting their product stuff. And then that's it for the season. Like you just keep kind of keep seeing that and then let the riders carry it through the rest of the year. Yeah. I, I think I, I totally agree with all that. I think, you know, you having the brands leverage their personalities of their athletes, yeah. but helping them with it to like, you know, an edit or whatever. Yeah. Anything more on top of just the, the basic product yeah, knowledge. And I, sure. I think it, cause that stuff helps, you know, a well-rounded sport be real and all that stuff and gives the people something to, to consume. That's yeah, good. exactly. So, yeah. Lip smack too. Where's that at? Dude, that would be sick. <laughs> so sick. So sick. Hit me up, Jeff. I'll help film. <laughs> Maybe pro bono. Oh, there you go, Jeff. <laughs> In this economy, we love that. Love it. Uh, okay. So I got a, uh, Kind of a long Patreon question from Grant Duenick. So it's, I got to read it all because it's all no, context based. So because of the size of the industry and high barrier of entry to the sport, it seems like there is a disproportionate amount of people competing for a rel relatively small amount of money in contracts, prizes, incentives, etc. Would a year slash season away from contest contests with an intentional focus from everyone on growing the sport be a viable step towards expanding the market and, and increasing the money pool? I think it's a fascinating question what does it do though you know what i mean like yeah. if you step away what 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 do you do if you step away i mean i can't think of anything that if you stop doing that stuff what do you focus on it's tough man i and it's and that's what's funny is like you'd ask about paintball and wakeboarding like it's the same thing in paintball like it's just not there's just not a lot of money that's just getting thrown around there used to be money that was just thrown around like, oh, yeah, 20 grand, pff, whatever, dude. We have a $100,000 budget for marketing for wakeboarding this year. It's like, whatever. That's not a thing anymore. And it probably could be a thing. Like, these brands, honestly, are making the same, if not more, than they were. But they just never brought back that marketing budget. They're like, oh, well, so-and-so is going to get a pay raise. Not the marketing budget's going to come back to 150. It's going to stay at 50. You know, it's like, I think that, that's where you know and it may, maybe these people don't see the return in that money that they were spending you know so maybe all those years and like well what did that really do for us but also at the same time wakeboarding was bopping which extreme sports in general were and people were spending a lot of money so it's like was that the reason everything was cool because everyone was spending money it's just big and in your face so yeah i don't know it's not, some of it's not tangible right like there's a lot of rois i feel like and i'm not a freaking business expert you know i don't have an mba or anything but i feel like a lot of rois aren't directly okay we got x amount of clicks that led to x amount of sales and that was it like yeah if that if that marketing spend had good roi then let's keep doing it but like there's other marketing spends that you don't see the roi yeah that's but tough it, but it grows the sport gets people into it and that roi will come in 5 10 15 years like yeah so that's, that's it's, yeah it's tough it's a it's a tough question for sure so, I mean, he's got a second part of this question. So, A, I don't think, you know, getting rid of contests would be a good thing at all. I think we need oh, contests yeah. to legitimize a sport every year. Um, but he said he's primarily a boat person, and he, and he sees, to him, it seems like the boat companies are making more than ever 
to your point, but or the other board companies, but not increasing the support for the actual sport and their riders. Um, and I think that's basically what you were just saying is it's like this yeah. fascinating point of, well, boats are more expensive. Obviously, margins are higher. You know, you're making more money. Yeah. Or the margins the same doesn't matter. But it seems like maybe the support for the riders and actually growing the activities isn't maybe quite there. Yeah, but also at the same time, like how much are the riders really selling boats? Yeah. Like real like fifty year old Johnny over there isn't going, Rusty's sending it, I'm buying that boat because he doesn't know. He just knows that that boat looks sick at the boat show and his grandson is going to be out there on the lake with him every day. And the sales guy he talked to said it was better than the com- competitor's exactly. boat. And he's like, yeah, for sure. But, you know, like, yeah, I, that whole subject is, is, is a wild one because I think, I don't think the board brands are making as like amazing money. Like I think they kind of fluctuate like COVID bopping. Now they're like overestimated because they were selling so much. And now it's like this whole thing, but boat brands are pretty much steadily cruising and they might have like leveled off, but it's like, yeah, what, what, why, why are they going to pay more or support more riders? Because really like, what's the ROI on doing that? Like you're saying, maybe it's, you know, the Malibu riders experience and all the stuff they do. I think that is more valuable. Like when LF was doing their tour around and like all these things that, get the public more involved in the grassroots stuff boots on the ground boots on the ground for sure because that's where i got involved you know going to ints or going to this demo and that demo like that's what got me hooked you know granted i didn't have parents that were going to go buy a boat or anything but you know i bought boards or whatever it was so i think i think more boots on the ground is probably you got to get it in front of people's face because it's not that wakeboarding is not cool like wakeboarding is sick paintball is sick BMX is sick, skateboarding sick, but it's like people going through their phone, seeing it is only going to, I mean, how much you just freaking, you don't even know what you just saw and you don't remember it the next day or the next hour. Yeah. But if you go and have an experience, you're going to remember that for the rest of your life because Ollie Jerome was there and told you just lean back and ride off the dock and you didn't die (laughs) and you'll never forget that day. So it's like, I think getting these people in these random public areas experiences is going to be the key. Yeah. And I feel like that regardless of what the media landscape or how people consume content looks, that will never change. Like Mm -hmm. talking to someone in person and obviously you have to, you know, keep the pro riders pro. Like there has to be professional athletes in these sports that people can, you know, idolize and they're heroes and whatever. But yeah, I think to answer that long question, which was a good question. It was a good topic to bring up, Grant. Oh, I like that. But I think the number one thing is like, like you say in the Malibu tour, like getting as many people to meet the pros, hang out, yeah. see that this is actually fun. And hey, maybe it's more fun than the other stuff you're doing. Exactly. Get into it. I yeah. agree. All right. I, uh, I say we dive into filming a little bit more. So we kind of talked about when you first picked up a camera. Uh, I want to know who are some of your favorite riders that you've gotten to film with. Oh, I was thinking about this. I have filmed with so many people. It's insane. And it's insane to think about now. Like when you're in the moment, you're just like, this is just what it is. But like the amount of people that I've hung out with, met, done it, shot with them. Honestly, I'd be like, you had Ben Greenwood on. I haven't shot with him. But I'm like, I'm trying to think of people that I haven't shot with. Like I've, I might've not shot Randall and I might've not shot Ben Greenwood. I've shot Zane Swain. Like I'm just, I, I don't really know who I haven't filmed at some point for something brand or situation which has been so sick. Yeah, that's so cool. It's so cool because it's like being able to like make them feel comfortable too, especially if like the older dude didn't know me and it was just like, I'm coming over to his house to film. It's like, you got to be able to vibe with them because if you don't, then you're not going to get the best out of them and all that stuff. So it's been really cool to film with so many people, so many people. I I would love to like compile an edit where I just had one clip of each person I've ever filmed. I was just thinking that would be so sick. It takes so long. It would take forever. Especially to make it like watchable and that or just even find the stuff, bro. I have (laughs) hard drives just all over the place. You got a couple names? I mean, there got to be a couple names. Some guys that are like that, you know, I love hearing that I'm going to wake up and go film with you. Um, Dom was one of those. Dom was definitely one because it was just like you knew you were going to get clips. Murray 
epic. You just can't beat a, a Murray Rayleigh to the flats. Like, so sick. Um, filming Raph Winch, that was pretty sick. Like, helping him with some stuff. Um, I mean, those are some yeah, I mega mean, names right that's there. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's just like, you don't really think about it until, like, you think about it. You're like, yeah. Like, I mean, is there anyone that's like, you don't have to name names, or you can if you want, that's like, not great to film with? And it doesn't have to be a personal thing. It can be like, well, they get really upset when they don't land a trick or like whatever. And they, no one comes to mind. So okay. it must have not been anything too gnarly. I that's mean, good. there's definitely been situations where I'm like, so and so's blowing it. Like, that's of course, but like nothing. But they're not good. Like, nah, say, dude. motherfuck you, like Cole. No, nah, dude. I, <laughs> no, no, no. And like, my thing is, I like to pride myself in like not missing the clip. Like, I like to be consistent, you know, like. If you are trying this trick and you get it on the 20th try, I got it. You're not going to have to go do 21 because the one that you tried, I missed on. So, like, yeah. I always try to, like, be on point. Dialed back there. Yeah. Uh, what project would you say you've been most proud of filming? I think to say Untamed is pretty easy just because it's probably gotten the most views. I think because I ended up putting it on my Vimeo just because of the music. I didn't want to deal with YouTube or whatever. And it had, like... I mean, it's probably at like 30,000 views now or something. But I remember like when I put it and it was like at 20,000, I was like, yo, that's crazy, crazy. So it's probably the most like response I've had. But like I did a Red Bull video with Gunner in Cincinnati, like a winch video. So sick. And it, it's underrated because I don't think many people saw it for some reason. What's it called? Do you remember? Because I'll, I'll put that uh, in the show notes. Cincinnati, like Cincinnati something. With Gunner or Gunther? Gunther. Sorry. Gunther, okay. Sorry, yeah, yeah, Gunther, yeah. not Gunner. Yep. Sorry, I was just that. with Gunner yesterday, so he's on my brain. <laughs> okay, but, yeah, I'll link that too, though. Yeah, that video was sick. Like, all of Cincinnati flooded, and we're, like, winching the city. Like, streets are flooded. It was crazy. And that's, that dude's a visionary. Like, he he's a grinder, man. Dude, and he's got the freaking skills to, yeah. like... He's got the skills, yeah. and then he's, his family's amazing. We stayed at his parents' house. Me and Jeff Mathis went up there. Stay at his parents' house. They're super sick. His dad's just down. Like that, his dad is down to grind, dude. He's just carrying the winch, driving, whatever, man. It's that that family's a unit. I'll say that for well, sure. They produced a unit too. Damn. Gunther's a fucking animal, dude. <laughs> Could you uh, ma- can you imagine what Megan and Gunther if they had a kid? Yeah. Like that is that's what I'm wondering, unit, dude. dude. I mean Or Chris O'Shea and Anna Nickstead. That's, also another one. That's a, that's the stop. And that's, Wes and Cena, dude. We've got oh three. Gosh. I mean, so there Megan, could be some wake but, babies up in here, dude. Dude, in 15 years, wakeboarding? Yeah. Could have some, yeah. Yeah. Some could icons. Be some sleepers. <laughs> um, what are some, you know, common misconceptions about wakeboard filming? And maybe that's not, maybe that's a bad way to put it, but like some things that people either wouldn't realize if they're not filming or they don't get. It takes a lot to do it. You know, like, let's start with boat filming, right? Like, if you're going to film boat, you got to have another boat. You got to chase. It's the only way you're going to produce a lot of stuff. You can do it with a jet ski, but it's pretty, it's yeah, it's got to be butter. Like, yeah. It's got to be butter. If, you, if it's choppy out there on a jet ski and you're like, just <laughs> mo- like, it's not stable. Like, you're like, buddy's cutting in. You're like, oh, ah, again. And like, I hate, I hate having to tell people do it again. So, like. Jet ski, not my favorite, but like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta have another boat. You gotta have someone driving that boat. It's like, even just setting up a shoot can be like hectic because it could be, you gotta shoot this rider. Okay. Well, he's got his buddy to drive that boat. Well, I need another boat. I need someone to drive that boat. So it's like to do it all, you need at least four people to, to like just film one yeah. dude ride. So like filming boats a little gnarly winching is sick because it's a lot of work to get the spot set up and set up the winch and everything but like that vibe is very more mellow you're at your own pace feeling about the cable cherry like i got a 150 to 600 lens and i'm just i'll just walk around on a tripod and just be sniping sniping like that's easy i can sit there and drink beer and sit in my chair and do my thing but yeah, I, it's funny. I think boat filming is probably the most obnoxious because it just takes so many things and so much money. And I don't think people realize like when they would see like boat movies and like when they would see Kilgus's stuff, 
that costs so much money. I mean, one shot. What what is what is that one movie where like there's like nine boats like running? Uh, I was, just, I was talking about this with Kyle the other day. It's, I think it's one behind you, but like, uh, what is the name of it? Dang it! I was just I talking with Kyle that. Alberts freaking last week about it. You had Kyle Alberts on. Yeah, yeah. love that, dude. Love that. Dude. So I can't sick. Wait for that. That's yeah, really yeah. Sick. Anyways, yeah, that I mean that alone yeah. costs more than movies. Think about how many people you have to have out there, how much boat gas, how many boats, the logistics of getting all these boats on the water. It's in the helicopter. Getting the chopper. There's like two choppers in there. Yeah. It's like no one's doing that crap anymore. That's what I'm saying. Like there's that money is not in the industry anymore. So like when people look back and they're like, Well, we used to do this and this was sick. I'm like, dude, that's not an option. Yeah. Get your DJI Mavic 3 up and get some get some stuff because like that's all you're gonna get, dog. Like you ain't hopping in a copter. I think the only people that shoot in a helicopter now is Garrett when he shoots for Boating Magazine. Just because Boating Magazine is that's like legend kind old of stuff. school, just like that's the shot. Yeah. But like, yeah, man, the money that used to get thrown into filming some wakeboard stuff was crazy. I couldn't imagine. I definitely couldn't imagine. So yeah, I mean the boat shoots, I feel like a lot of people at least I would think it's like, oh, you gotta have a chase boat. But yeah, it really is fully involved a lot of people time yep it's it's a whole whole lot to it uh so for the gearheads i don't really know anything about cameras but if you're shooting wakeboarding you know you're kind of touching on what you were using but what kind of cameras lenses all that stuff as far as like a camera nowadays 4k 120 seems to kind of be like for like that super slow-mo crispiness i love that but like you don't need it right like you could honestly get away with a camera that is 10 1080p um 60 oh, i gotta go pick up a check later there you go yeah taxes anyway so um but i would say as long as a camera can get you out there filming you're gonna learn a lot because you're not gonna cross a shot when you first start so like just because you buy five thousand dollar setup doesn't mean that you're gonna get a five thousand dollar shot you're gonna get whatever you're able to do. So like for me, buy the cheapest thing. I mean, there's so many videos on YouTube. Like I learned everything I know on YouTube. Like I blew my knee out, sat on the couch and learned everything. So like if I can do it, anyone can do it. But I would say if you're gonna get a setup, like I started with the Sony A6300 pretty much. I had a 6000, but I upgraded to the 6300 cause it did like 1080, 120 or something. And I filmed Blake's video on that, Alex's video on that. Like everything I did for Ambush was done on that camera. So all the skate stuff, everything. And it's a tiny, I still use it. I just shot photos with it yesterday for a shoot. So it's like, you don't really need much. You just need that, you need a lens. Like I have a 24 to 105 like power zoom and that'll pretty much do everything you need. Granted, I have like a wide lens, a fish eye and like a 7200 and an extra long lens. You know, you, you build the gear as you go, but just get something. Just yeah. get something in your hands because you got to learn, well, why is this blown out? Why does this look all crappy? Why is this grainy? Why, you know, you got to go through the trials and tribulations for sure. Yeah. Why am I only filming this person's butt? No, oh, you should film in front of them probably. <laughs> <laughs> Every shot, but uh, So, yeah, I mean, on, on top of that, any quick tips that you can give to riders and filmers that are getting into it? I mean, you kind of touched on some stuff there, but... Yeah, I'm going to take a piss, and then I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to let it rip. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so we were talking maybe some quick tips. You were giving a couple, but maybe some quick tips for people getting into filming, wakeboarding specifically. Yeah, I would say steady hands goes a long way. See some shaky footage out there, bro. That um, That's one. I would say, you know, make sure things are exposed right and in focus. I mean, other than that, you just point the camera, I mean, put them in the frame. I can't tell you how many times I shoot and like, I don't know what trick they're doing. Like, I don't actually like, I'm not watching the trick. I'm just making sure they stay in my frame. So it's actually really funny. Like, oh, you see that? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't even know what you did, but I know that I crushed I it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, <sighs> Learning all that like technical stuff in the beginning might suck. Like it sucks to like learn something new sometimes, but like it's crucial. Understanding aperture, understanding ISO. If you crank up the ISO too much, it's gonna be grainy. And then like there's so many little camera details that 
You can learn on YouTube. Once you kind of have that base, then you go practice it. Go with your friends to the cable park. Go stand on a feature with the wide angle lens and get in there and understand, okay, maybe he needs to come in from the left side, left side of the frame, come across the middle and finish on the right. Not just like center, center, you know, it's like, Little, That's my biggest pet peeve of fish sure. filming. <laughs> but I learned that because I started filming skating. So I like, sure. I kind of went through that of failure and being like, yo, dude, you blew my clip. Like, that's Wait, the why? worst. Oh, okay. That's the worst feeling ever is like you, <laughs> you thinking you crushed it and they crushed it and then they watch it and they're like, they're like, ooh. And you're like, what? And you're like, oh, dude, but like, you're like too low or like i'm like you know those my my friend got eaten alive with that and like quit filming because he would not crush it you know like we were both learning and it's like dude you got to push through those moments fail get back up shoot it again get the clip learning moments dude just learn dude yeah you got to put the camera in the hands or you're not going to learn go out there and film your dog have your dog over there and run at you and like okay well he's running at you how are you gonna get the focus you run an auto focus is he gonna run slow-mo like what's your shutter at for slow-mo there's like so many little things but if you learn the back end then when you get in those moments it's like second nature you're like cool i'm shooting 60 i'm probably gonna do 120 shutter speed you know this that all that there's just so many little technical things that i think people don't pay attention to and then like people like People like me or other filmers look at it and you're like, you have no clue what you're doing with that camera. But you captured it, but you also have it like a thousand shutter speed and it's super crispy for like you, but there's no motion blur. Like when you see my hand right now, it's 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 blurry. So like when I'm watching the clip, I don't need to see every single finger. You know, like that's just not how you view it. So like learning the camera and how you intake footage is like that's the biggest thing because you can go out there bright sunny day I, I get it you're shooting wakeboarding you're gonna go a thousand shutter speed because it makes your exposure correct get an nd filter bro get an nd filter please sucker's got one built in right here bud yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> mine has a variable nd built in like i i hated having to use an nd right but you got to have it for wakeboarding like you're in the water it's gleaming like Gotta have an ND filter. Because if not, then you're doing that and it just looks overdone. So little things, man. Just So I would say, I mean, I think my takeaway from that would be whatever camera you have, Google it, YouTube oh it, and then just be like, how do I get this camera dialed? It doesn't matter what you got. Yeah. There's a video out there. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like if you think about it, you can type it, you can find it. Yeah. It's there. All right. Love it. And uh, yeah, let the uh, people come across the screen on the fish eye. Don't need to move the fish eye yeah. too much. Let the fish eye do the work. <laughs> let it work for you. Uh, all right, we got a segment. Um, it's called Deserve Some Love, presented by Driftline. So what is Driftline? They're an Ottawa brand that makes wetsuit line board shorts. I've been rocking these suckers at uh, OWC in the winter in Florida, and it keeps me nice and toasty warm. So nice. make sure to check out driftline.co to learn some more about them. But the Deserve Some Love segment is, what is somebody, whether it be rider, filmer, industry guy that maybe didn't get the love they deserved didn't get the pup who are some people yeah well like i think kyle alberts would be one yeah and we and you know alliance did that video of like the pro that was or whatever the title of it was it was the yeah the pro that never was i think that, pro that never but. was yeah he's definitely one um you know i was just hanging out with bob sitchell like bob sitchell was sick like he cared still about sick stuff. dude i think. still sick yeah i'm sure if i went out there and filmed a set with him we'd get some we get some clips yeah for sure but instead we were over his house cranking out some pieces last night it was sick <laughs> but it. um yeah underrated i mean honestly like graden got recognition but like he didn't really like break through to the top you know I feel like Graydon's one of those guys that you could easily see in like an energy drink helmet, but it just never really like, it's never, never happened. happened. Yeah. And like, I think he would have been down for it all. Yeah. It's just people who kind of just wrote him off. And like, even, even Quinn for a long time was so underrated. Like I, the, um, what's his name? You, he filmed uh lip smack. The 
film or Justin Stevens did no. not film Lip Smack. Oh, 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 Patrick something. Yeah, Patrick Whelan. Whelan Sorry, Day. I don't know. I just was hanging up. He did not mess with Quinn. Like he was not about Quinn. Like he would go and deliberately not point the camera at him at a slingshot shoot or something like that. Like wherever they were at doing stuff. Like, dude, how Quinn is like one of the nicest dude, guys I've ever known. And that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Patrick is Patrick. Like I've I've known Patrick for a little bit. Kind of a doucher a little bit. He's busy day trading in Hawaii. Yeah, right? he's he is a character. You know, he hasn't done done me wrong anyway or whatever, but like I can get what how people feel about him or whatever. He's very opinionated and he's his, he's himself, but like yeah, he definitely didn't give Quinn the time of day. Like Quinn probably would have blown up sooner if Patrick wasn't such a douche to him. Dang. For sure. Because like they were filming I'm pretty sure he was at the projects when they were filming like Nate Perry and all them. Cause we were all right. like, we were all boom headphones and we were all like Nate Perry. Like it was like a whole thing. And I remember like he was, I'm pretty sure he was at the projects and he was riding it. And when he rode, he didn't film them. So like, that's why he didn't have clips. I'm pretty sure like that's the way it broke down. And I'm like, that's crazy to me. Like I've definitely at times I've definitely pointed the camera and acted like I'm filming you. I'm not filming you because I knew you weren't going to do anything. But, like, for you to, like, and those are people that are not Quinn. Those are people that are not shredding. Like, Quinn was probably doing some stuff, and you just, like, wrote him off. I would, lo I would love to know why. I would, if Patrick, you ever, get in here, bud. I'll have you right on. Do you ever have, you have, have you had Quinn on? I don't think so. No, but well, it'll happen. Yeah. Because I, cause I feel like Quinn got stiff for a long time because he was, he was sick for a long time before he actually blew up. Yeah. For sure, at least on the cable side of things. Yeah, Quinn's always been sick. A nice guy, dude. Love Quinn. Go to Valdosta. Hang out with dude, Quinn. Dude. Love He'll be there. Quinn. Quinn. Quinn's helped me out a lot for sure. Back in the day. All right. So speaking of wakeboarding, I mean it's wakeboard podcast. <laughs> what's uh what's your setup and how often do you ride? Ooh, my setup. I've got a what is it? A one fifty seven coalition. Is that what is that? What it's size? It's a big around? unit, right? They may even make one bigger than that. But I yeah. think they make a one sixty one. Do they? So I still got that. I think it's a twenty three, maybe. Okay. So I've got that and some space mob boots. And then I also just got a liquid force trip and some peak bindings for the boat for when I do those boat reviews. Stuff. Just a classic setup right there. Yeah, I was like, you know, I don't need anything crazy because I don't do anything crazy anymore. So it's like, let's get a classic. What setup. size trip? I think I got a 144. How big is it come now? That might be the, the biggest. I think that's capping out, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm right. I'm riding those two when I gotta, I gotta slap it up. You know your um, angles at all or no? On either of those? What is it? Like 12 and 12, pretty much. I'm just a classic 12 and 12. Okay. Yeah. And rope length, speed, you got, you know any of that? I was always like a 75, 22, 8, or 23. You know, those boats change, speed changes. But yeah, I was always like set. At one point, I was riding 77, and you like take like this loop and like half loop it. It was like a super cool thing to do. Be like 2.5 feet longer. Yeah, but, okay. but yeah. Okay. So, I mean, uh, you kind of brushed over the how often do you ride question. I ride when I have to ride, which is what I was telling you. It's like, I don't, like, I, I was hanging out with Mo Mossy, came over to mess with his citrus part, and he's like, oh, let's go ride the cable. And I'm like, nah, dude. Why not? It's, it's just, I don't, I've done it for so long, and it's like, there's no, I used to be really decent at wakeboarding, and now when I go, I'm really bad. So like I used to go do switch toe nines off a kicker. Now I don't even want to freaking hit the kicker because I can, can't even do that. So it's like I thrive off progression. So like when I progress, I get addicted to that. I can't progress anymore. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure if I like dedicated everything and got back to riding, I'd probably get back to where I was and maybe, but it's like, I just, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts yeah. to do that. So now I'm at the point to where it's like, I got to do a boat review. I'll go ride behind that. I'll surf behind it. If I got to do, like we do the gear guide stuff, I'll ride that. Like I think last year I only rode one cable board. So I only rode the cable like once last year. So it's like every time I ride, it's like shaking rust off every time. So it's like, I don't know. I, I feel like that love will come back to at a certain point and it's slowly creeping in at moments where I'm like, I want to go ride. But then it's 40 degrees out and I don't want to go ride. So 
and then when the summer comes it's like it's just kind of i'm just ripping on all fronts on everything in my life so it's like yeah i don't know i don't know i i would i would like to say yes i would like to ride more but i don't know okay i mean i i think i agree with that in the sense of if you're not wakeboarding a lot yeah after you've wakeboarded a lot easier way to put it if you wakeboard a lot wakeboarding is a lot easier and a lot more fun if you don't wakeboard a lot wakeboarding can be almost frustrating because you don't have your muscles you don't have your you you don't have anything dude it pisses me off oh we're shaking it up a little yeah so i got married and i have like a million beers at the house that are all different look at this little loose guy right here (laughs) though she's still going drank yeah so i mean if if you're going to get into wakeboarding like get into wakeboarding and keep wakeboarding That's yeah yeah when way. you stop it's that muscle memory and everything because like you have like wakeboard muscles are a thing dude. oh yeah you can't go to the gym and get those muscles i used to be so yoked i was like looking at a photo i was like dude those shoulders what happened to those but you just riding and you're just you're constantly pulling and yeah. just man i wish i wish i was i wish i rode still just to be in that shape that was so good I feel like proximity to cable. If you were like five minutes away from a cable, I don't know you, but I would, I would bet you'd probably ride a little bit more. But I don't I mean, know, dude. I Maybe lived, not. I lived ten minutes from Odub for years. You weren't there that often. I wouldn't. I mean, when I first moved down here, I was still riding. I'd go ride with the boys, film with the boys, but then like every year, it was always like less yeah. and less. Just because I'm all I do is wakeboard stuff, so it's like, you know, I was like burnt on certain aspects of it because it's like all i did yeah for so long so definitely you need a break you need a break from everything so let's uh you're obviously still follow wakeboarding though you're you're involved with wakeboarding heavily i would say still um or i mean would you say that pretty heavily involved in wakeboarding yeah i mean i definitely don't like keep up with too much like i used to but like if so and so drops apart like i'll watch it or you know there's just so much instagram stuff like yeah i couldn't tell you who's like dope besides like the main dude like i know trent's hot i know his brother's hot but like some of these euro people i don't i don't know yeah for sure so i guess more of a general question what gets you hyped on wakeboarding if anything does Mm. that you've seen i could i could i'd probably give examples like like when i film ulf or something like that going to the flats juice me up like when when sick stuff goes down i still love filming like when someone goes big or does a big trick and like there's consequence and like it's you're only going to land one like that gets me going gets me going dude i love that so it's like sometimes i i I don't have that i'm going to do a boat review i'm just shooting a boat running down the lake like that's not going to juice me up or so and so's wake surfing behind like i don't really give a crap like wake surfing's cool like it saved the industry for a certain ex- to a certain extent but like it's pretty lame like Ulf going to the flats not lame Sam Brown doing this Mossy doing that like you know like I have so many friends that are still ripping and doing so much like that stuff stokes me out when you're like in person but I yeah. see it so much on my phone that like I just I'm so immune and I'm like this it doesn't so and so did this I'm desensitized like, cool. to it yeah all. it's yeah. so desensitized like it's very obvious now but like when you see it in person, you feel it, you see it, you know there's consequences to that action. So that's what kind of gets me hyped. So in person, like where do you get yeah, when stoked? I I still get stoked when I film. Okay, like I'm still in the boat, like hooping and hot. Like I'm I like to try and be a good time. Like when someone's having a session, or even yeah. if they're having a bad session, I try to bring them out of it. You got to do what you can. I, I mean, try. Yeah, I try. Okay, uh, I I can't believe it took me this long to ask this. This was on my list of first few questions to ask, and I breezed over it. Who is Rody this year? 2024 three Ooh. when is this coming out when, when will this podcast come out uh early march march 8th i think maybe oh we can drop okay so on the 27th wait, wait should i try and guess first yeah go ahead go ahead or give me a hint I'll give me a hint i'll because... give you he's he's an american person okay and he's a cable rider for the most part see there's two it could be Trent or gavin it's, it is or it could one be one of them <laughs> It could be either. I'll go Trent. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We we landed on Trent. I think we 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 chit chatted about Gavin a little bit. Ulf 
was kind of like the second runner up in our opinion, just based on like, you can't deny what like him going in the flats kind of rejuvenated a little boat riding for a lot of people. It absolutely did. Yeah. You know, you know, when it comes to rider of the year, it's like picking the rider of the year. It's, it almost, especially now in 2023, it's different than like when you're picking a rider in 2008 or nine, like what you do is way different. So now it's like, well, what are they doing? What are they doing for the industry? What are they doing the cable side? Do they do it all? You know, I think for Trent, what kind of legitimized it was he started dabbling in boat and didn't just dabble like the boy went off. Yep. So, and I'm pretty sure he's going to ride pro tour this year, which is crazy. He did say that. Yeah. And he should. I mean, it, it, that is as long as it translates, like he has the bag of tricks. Yeah. So as long as he figures out the tension, the pop, the whole nine, like he's going to be a machine. He's already a machine. So if you can just transfer that, it's, it's going to piss some people off and I love it. Oh, it's going to be so good for the yeah, sport yeah. though. When, when so-and-so has been riding the tour for Their three years or and boat. this kid comes in and knocks you out and he's in finals and you're like, you know, like I love, I love that because we film all this, so it's like, I'm always, I'm always down with that. But yeah, so Trent, ride of the year, 2023 ride of the year. It's well deserved, and it's sick because like I didn't, I didn't want to not give him ride of the year because in the past, before I was at Alliance, there was a moment where Daniel Grant was Daniel Grant, like going huge, winning everything, and it was his year to win. But he didn't win because in from what I understand is he was going to have more years. They thought that he was going to have more good years. So like going into this one, I was like, I don't ever want that to happen again. Like if he's having a hot year, he's having a hot year because next year he could he could blow his knee out and be done. Like you don't know. So like I, I definitely didn't want that situation because I know like past years like grub and parks are always like daniel grant daniel grant i'm like well yeah but it, like he it wasn't like he just keeps being daniel grant but like when he was like daniel grant's moments when he was younger like he should have won rider of the year yeah i don't know what year that was it might have been probably around debut time i would say yeah maybe before yeah, but right around like, there probably. it was i really love watching daniel right because nobody was going that big and just so much control and yeah so like yeah i was like yeah let's let's run trent it makes sense and it's a group decision for the most part i was gonna say so how does it how's the decision happen it, it kind of works like i'll text everybody I and mean, i say everybody i'll probably text like 10 people like you know i'll text past right right of the years like gunther john grub parks um you know i'll text all those people and a couple of industry people and just just pick people's brain just hey send me send me two people send me three people you think and i'll kind of like okay they're all saying this person so then, we, so then I'm kind of like thinking, I'm like, what have I seen this person do? And then we'll go to the boys. We'll have a, we have a meeting pretty much every Monday. So I was like, okay, let's figure out right of the year. We just sit there and talk about it. And then we just, it was like Trent or Ulf. And then like the next Monday meeting, it was like, it needs to be Trent. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a collaborative like decision. And it's not like sponsor based or anything like that. It's, it's pretty it's a pretty genuine decision. And I, every year I'm sure someone's like, oh, so-and-so should have won. Like, well, there's only one. So there's yeah. only one, and I get it. Do better next year. I don't know. No, like, no, I think you say that a little louder. Do better next year. Do better if next you want to be the one that wins. Like, it wouldn't be surprised if Ulf stays on the path he does and La Familia comes out with a, with a movie yep. and his part's insane. Or even Sam Brown keeps doing what he's Win doing. Win a couple contests. Like, yeah. it, it's just like you just need a little bit more, and you're there. Because, like... There's plenty of people on the radar. It's like you just need to kind of execute a certain amount of things to show your broadness in the sport. You know? Yeah, definitely. So, so um, I think I, I love Rider of the Year. I think it's a super important thing for wakeboarding. Um, like, what's the plan? Because I know I'm thinking Pat, to the past couple of years, it's like Johnny D one, Graham one, which that was like a COVID thing. Like, what's the plan in terms of like, is there a content plan or like a trip or like, is there anything in involved it at all when with I, that or when i first started i loved the idea of doing the trip because thasher does it and obviously it's kind of based off that whole situation but pretty much i just try to plan a surprise it's almost like your surprise party so like for for graham like everything's set up and it's like graham's was sick yeah so sick 
And it's like, I love that because the reaction is so genuine. Like they don't have a clue, dude. And it's so sick. And I love that part of it. So yeah, it's like, you know, like right now I'm hitting up Ruck. I'm like, yo, let's get turned out at the lake. Make him think that he's filming, you know, for just some Ronix bull crap. Maybe I'll be there to like help film or whatever. So I'm like filming like the before and then probably set, we'll probably have, I actually need to call him after this, but it's like probably set people up at the house. They have like a house there. And then like, as he's rolling out and going and just like, everyone's there like, yo, and we'll print out like a, like a cover poster. So, you know, got a, got a photo. We'll, we'll mock that up. So it's sick though. It's like, that's the stuff that I look forward to. And then like, that's like the, uh, that's like doing editorial stuff. Like that's the stuff that's sick. Like I wish we could, Pretty much Rider of the Year is the only thing that we at Alliance do that's still just out of the love for the sport. Yeah. And, like, that's pretty much that's the capacity that we're at as far as, like, just doing stuff for fun. Just the way it is. But it's, you know, at least we keep that fire going, you know. It's, like, doing what we can. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I Like I said, I love Rider of the Year. I think it's – like, I, w- I want it to be a bigger deal than it is. Like, I want I know. it to be – you know, yeah. and not even to Alliance's point, just, like – the community of wakeboarding i want more mm-hmm. involvement in like the ride of the year and it's a big deal like I, I want it to be a huge deal i want there to be anticipation like before yeah. it comes out and like yeah honestly probably stuff. tomorrow we'll start i, I kind of came with a plan to kind of like post maybe like six or seven or eight people that like potential roadies like who do you think is going to be and try to build the hype for yeah, the yeah. week prior and then we'll announce it that day we surprise them and then put the video out like a day or two later so i love it i, I love how like it still means something to the riders. Definitely. Like it still has, it's probably not to the extent what it was when wakeboarding was in its prime, but I get nothing is, but I, yeah, exactly. And I think that it still holds that value with the rider. And that's all I really care about. Like I want you to feel rewarded for you. Like we recognize that you put in this work, you know? Yeah. And I feel like the same thing. Like you get a pro model, you get like these things that you want to check off your list as a wakeboarder. And Rider of the Year is one of those. Yeah. So. Love it. Does Trent know right now or no? Well, I guess no. Because no. you're going to surprise him at the lake, right? Hell no. That's, no, he don't know. He don't know. I think his dad knows. And then I got to get Johnny D to help me link people up and just try to get people out there and yeah, get a surprise. I, I haven't had one fail yet since I came to Alliance. So, fingers crossed this one goes good too. So Okay. Love it. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that. I mean, that should be... That'll have already come out. That'll but probably, like, that'll, it'll be recent. So yeah, that'll probably drop like the 29th. February 29th. Yeah. Oh, because it's probably. leap year this year. So yeah, it is. That bonus. So day. then he'll, you know, that date will never exist again. It's Sorry, Trent. Four years. You'll have a ride of the year for one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, I mean, you were talking about pointless productions and, and kind of, I want to start talking about the future and, and what that looks like for you. And you kind of touched on it, but I mean, is there any big projects in the works in the future or, you know, what's the future kind of looking like for you? Yeah, I mean, so I just got married. So Congratulations. Like, thank you. Yeah, my life is definitely, like, taking that next step, right? Like, you go from, like, high school, college, and then once I moved here, it was kind of like that mid-20s, learning how to be on your own, responsibility, and then now I'm married, and now we're talking about having kids. I mean, everyone's having kids, dude. Wes having a kid. Mark Rosser just had a kid, like, all my friends are having kids and my chick is all about it. So it's like, Oh, probably in May, June. So you're pulling the goalie. Yeah. 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 We're definitely pulling the goalie this year. So probably next year I'll have a kid. So it's like my mindset is changing, you know? So I'm like, that's kind of where the point, like last year I was trying to figure out something with Nick Belmont, but he's kind of wanting to do a little something different. So this year I'm going to get with Shane and really try to, because I have so much time. I'm only working so many days at Alliance. And when I don't, it's like I pick up side gigs, but like I want to go after and try to pick up clients and make a consistent income. Because yeah. it's nice when I have the side work. It's like, oh, you know, you got a little 10K month. And you're like, what's up? A little 15K month. Whoa. And then next month, you're like, oh, I'm at four grand. What's going on? Like, you need some cheddar. So it's like bringing a kid in the world. I'm like, my, my brain is turning. And it's like, okay, let's point this productions. Let's get this going. You know, I got that alliance. I'll do, I'll do some other things and just try to fill the plate. You know, that's yeah. kind of where my head's at. Just try to make money, dude. Like you get older, like you gotta, 
you can only work for so long. When I turn 60, I don't want to be freaking doing the same thing. So it's yeah, like, you got to kind of switch your mindset for that. So that's been like the transition lately. Kind of an exciting time though. I mean, it sounds yeah. like in terms of like, yeah, especially cool. with Pointless and the, and the kid on the way, hopefully. So yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. It's definitely going to be a ride. That's for sure. So I got a, uh, another Patreon question from Derek Davis. Mm. None other mm. than we were talking about him earlier. And this is, I wanted to bring this up earlier, but this is a, uh, good thing to talk about and he's, he was saying how wild was it getting to ride for byerly brand back then dude that story is so crazy because he has so much involvement in that so like i was i was flow lf and i was starting to ride decent like i got double pagers and unleashed and like doing doing a little bit here and there and at this time i started working i started working at terminus might have just started working at ambush and hyperlight would do these like demos at the beginning of the year or something like that or at some point before the season they'd have their new gear all their dealers and everything would come out ride the boards man i wish i knew what it was called but anyway eddie beverly legend that is someone you should have on eddie beverly is an absolute unit of a person with the best stories ever so anyway he got Ebev was the rep for Ambush. So I, I, I knew him through all that. We go to Florida to go to this Hyperlight experience, Byerly experience. You go to Butch's place. He shapes a board. It's like this whole thing. You kind of see what it is. You go ride the boards. You literally shaped a board, then you go ride it. It's pretty sick. So we went to that, and I'm, I'm at the cable, and they had systems. And that was the first time riding systems, and I – you know, put a setup together, put it on, started taking laps. And I guess Derek is chilling with Byerly, just sitting there on the shore, just kicking it. And Byerly's like, yo, man, what's what's up with that guy, man? You know, just like asking questions about me. And Derek's like, yeah, that's cool. He's like, I like his style, you know? And so after that, Derek's telling me that. And I go, oh, sick, that's pretty sick. And he's like, yeah, they want to, they want to like, you know, what what do you think? Like, I'm like, what do you mean what I think? Like, Byerly did Byerly like that's sick that he thinks I'm I'm ripping or whatever and he's like well let's get you on what do you think about riding some like Byerly boards I'm like yeah sick so Ebev starts hooking me up with boards and then like I, that whole thing like snowballed so fast to where like I ended up just being on a product shoot and like I'm like with the boys I don't even know if it was that I, I, I remember I was at Pro Tour and it was still in Ackworth and yeah, I'm pretty sure I was still flow. Ackworth, Byerly's there, Cody Hess is there, and they're gonna go to Gyptopia after Pro Tour. Like, you wanna go? I'm like, yes. Not gonna miss the opportunity. So hop in the car with Scott Byerly and oh, and Brenton. So I'm with Cody Hess, Brenton, Byerly. I'm like a little starstruck a little bit. And I'm like rolling up to Gyptopia. I'm pretty trash in my opinion, compared to them. So I'm like looking at the setup, like this is scary, you know, like all this stuff. Anyway, go on this trip with them and like yada, yada. And the next thing you know, I'm getting invited to like a product shoot, shooting with Rodrigo, like put on this board to ride and it was super sick in the brochure, like whole thing. I'm like, this is sick. And that kind of turned into like, had like a travel budget. I th- oh, I'm pretty I sure didn't know you were point. getting some little cheddar yeah, yeah like the, like it was like a certain like few trips that like they helped me yeah, out with for sure but like i didn't sign a contract or anything so it was like i was on like the team like as far as like the website everything like i was on the team like i was a team rider and then um blew my knee out started riding again trying to get back into it and then at that point barley was like done and so cody was like figuring out his transition Brenton was done like he wasn't gonna do that Rathy was already pretty much checked out and BT and George Daniels were kind of checked out um trying to think who else was I mean, you just listed most of that team I think, I'm pretty sure like yeah. at the moment that was like the team yeah um so like that was done I remember being at expo that year when it was like the last year or whatever and I'm talking to Nelson and it's like Greg Nelson and I'm like Yo, so like, what's the transition here? You know, like, do I stay? Like, am I like coming on? He's like, pretty much you're gonna be starting from scratch. And I'm like, e. Nah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> See ya. 
Because what I really wanted to write, I wanted to write a slingshot board. Okay. Like, all my boys, we started Space Mob, that whole thing. Like, I wanted to ride slingshot. I knew it was I knew it was a better board for what I wanted. I broke I broke so many boards, dude. I probably my parents' house probably has twenty broken boards just in the back room, like chilling. And it's like they rode good behind the boat, but they we I tried for years to tell Butch to like and I'm not the only one, Brenton, Cody, make a wood board. You need to make a wood board for cable riding. And you're sitting here pressing foam. And I'm, I go to disaster something and I'm splitting boards every time. Like, it's just like, I probably went through a board every two weeks for like a whole season. One point, like I was getting like five packs of boards. It's frustrating to set them up every time at that point. Yeah, I, d- I just, I ran out of stickers, ran out of stickers, dude. <laughs> like freaking ran out of stickers. Like, damn. Like, yeah. Rip through boards. So anyway, that, that ended and it was pretty much like, I'm already homies with, with all the slingshot boys, I'm like McKee, like yo, what up? Like let me, let me, let's let's get it going, get a set up. Next thing I know, like I'm on the website, like I'm on the team, just phew, quick. Like oh, I love that. So I kind of do that, and then I, then like that whole, I don't, honestly, I can't remember how it happened. I just kind of simmered out at that point. Pretty much got the, the gig at Alliance yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. And so I wasn't priority priority wasn't just wakeboarding anymore. But okay, so I didn't know it was kind of a wild ride there with Byerly for a minute. Yeah, it was sick though. Byerly said, I went to, like, his birthday, like, adventure. I went to, like, Virginia and bungee jumped and stuff with, like, everybody. And we were, like, starfish. Like, when you bungee jump, you're supposed to keep your legs together. And, like, I just jump out and I starfish. And, like, I come up. They're all, like, grub and parks. And everyone's just, like, laughing. I'm like, what? They're like, do you starfish? And I'm like, I don't know what the frick that means, dude. A bungee jump. I just jumped off a bridge. You guys are welding and it's sketchy. And (laughs) I am I going to die? I don't know. But you guys do it, so I'm like, run it. But it was like, yeah, we jumped, we bungee jumped like five times in a row. It was so sick. I've never done it. So looks, it looks pretty fun. It's epic. Like I remember one, like the first jump, I just jump out, starfish, and then they're like, okay, well, like just step off and just look out. So I'm just like, look out the horizon, step off, and you. Just, I mean, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy sick, and it's like, it's kind of a legit bungee jump situation. Like it's not just like tourist style like you gotta i'd want grub there dude for sure dude you gotta like <laughs> land you gotta come up you gotta pogo you gotta like come up and grab the thing and then you kind of there went you throw down this thing you loop it around you then you gotta loop you gotta like feed the line and it's like i'm like this is a lot like build up but once you did it, it was sick yeah. it was so sick it I, seems like jumping off a tower at a cable but like on steroids yeah which yeah. is a lot of fun i haven't jumped out of a plane but bungee jumping is up there dang Love it. Um, all right. So I think uh, before we jump into some Patreon questions, we uh, move into who you want to thank. So anybody you want to thank? Man, I want to thank God for just giving me all these opportunities. It's insane how many things I've experienced. And like before I came on this, I was like thinking, I'm like thinking back, I'm like 2012, what was I doing? 2013, 14, 15, 16. I'm like, man, I've done a lot of stuff. And I've been given like these opportunities that probably didn't deserve, but just was just in the right place at the right time with the right people and just gave a crap. So it's been really sick and it's, it's cool to see like, you know, where we're at now and like, who knows where we'll be in another five years. So I I, I definitely want to thank my parents for always supporting me, but just everyone in the industry that like gave me a time of day, you know, it's like, you got all these kids hitting you up, emailing you, calling you like, I need a board, this and that. And like for Matt long to want to give me boards and like, you know, when you got a board, you got like, if you got two boards, like a cable and a boat board, like for the season, like you were like, you were repping hard. You were hooked up, dude. Yeah. You were hooked up. And then like for them to like kind of give me more, like that was so cool to like feel that support, which kind of kept pushing you. So it's like, you know, Derek Davis, like that dude's pretty much guided me on my whole like wake journey as for, like if i had a question about something i was probably going to him to ask what do you think about this what do you think about this should i do this is this cool can you help me with this so like that's like my big brother he's helped me a lot and then like all the boys like alabama boys georgia boys like 
we all it's it's really sick to see where Quentin came like came and got to and then you know I've done my thing and it's Alex and even Mathis like it's cool like we had like a crew Alabama grassroot events like all these things to like where we are now is like it's really cool and I think like having that support system and everyone's stoked and you're just pushing each other I think that's man I, I love that I'm thankful for that yeah absolutely man well thank you for coming on so I mentioned the patreon questions uh we're going to run through these after those will air for the patreon members the day after the podcast comes out and so, then it'll go live on youtube the sunday after the podcast comes out so patreon members get a little bit earlier but we're going to dive into those now um so thanks everyone for tuning in see you guys next time